And so when I say Chinese, I want you to scream out the, na the nation that's associated with this. For example, if I say Chinese, you're going to say what? China. All right, let's say it with authority. When I say Chinese, you say what? China. All right, that's just a, a test right there. So here we go. Chinese. China. Russian. Russian. Italian. Italy. German. German. Swedish. Korean, Korea. Egyptian, Egypt. Nigerian, Nigerian, Black. 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 Tell him, Pastor. Tell him, Pastor. Black, nothing. I hope you were able to successfully identify the issue. The lion won't sleep To sell our souls to barter profit Like God property is hard to market So we steady to aim, keep your eyes on target Cause when you got to drive, yeah, they'd rather you park it But I don't valet, you ain't getting these keys I'm keeping close hands, I'm on bending knee I'm just a reflection, dealing with eight sections Art mixed with life, you can feel the convection You lying, won't sleep It's hard to market, so we steady to aim, keep your eyes on target. Cause when you got to drive, yeah, they'd rather you park it. But I don't valet, you ain't getting these keys. I'm keeping close hands, I'm on bending knee. I'm just a reflection, dealing with eight sections. Art mixed with life, you can feel the convection. You're lying, won't sleep tonight. It's hard to market, so we steady to aim, keep your eyes on target Cause when you got to drive, yeah, they'd rather you park it But I don't valet, you ain't getting these keys I'm keeping close hands, I'm on bending knee I'm just a reflection, dealing with eight sections Art mixed with life, you can feel the convection You're lying, won't sleep The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black. I know you, know, you know what you are? <laughs> You're an ancient Israelite. Ancient Israelite, that's who you are. That's who you are. You give me time. Yeah. But if you give me time, but, 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 already said, I know, I know. We don't have too many years. I know, I know. Look, look at this. This is pages and pages of yes. notes. And I promise we'll give yes. more teaching. 
But here is my challenge to you. All right. I'm hearing some of your traditions. It's like the days of the Bible. Yes. Do you want to remain ancient Israelites or you want to be Jews? Do you want to remain ancient Israelites or you want to be Jews? The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black. Uh, the entire Bible is about black people. Um, not only was Jesus black, but every character in the Bible seems to be black too. Yeah, Zephaniah and Jeremiah and Jebediah, those, those all aren't white people names, okay? Um, and Jesus wasn't some tan, partially melanated Middle Eastern person either. I'm talking straight up black dude, okay? Even in the book of Revelation, when you get the vision of Daniel, he's describing someone with feet like burnt brass and white woolly hair, and we've got the deep running water voice with the, the red eyes, and uh, you guys, he's black. The Jewish people are black people, like Kanye was right. The same people that have stripped us of our the same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black. Today, it is prohibited, and you can Google this, to do a DNA test in Israel. Totally forbidden, wrong. It's illegal, it's a crime. You'll be jailed if you do a DNA test in Israel. Why? Because they know the truth will come out. You come from Poland, you come from Ukraine, you came from Europe, you came from everywhere else. And they were the original Middle Eastern Jews who lived together with the Muslims and the Christians for centuries, for centuries. So what happened to a lot of the Jews? I was told welcome home because I'm Jewish. Every single person who's Jewish that steps off the plane, especially for their first time in Israel, is told welcome home. Let's just sit with that for a second. This right here, this is my actual ancestry. I am 88% Ashkenazi Jewish, and none of my ancestors are from the Middle East. We're finishing now uh, part two, chapter two. Um, and what we've said so far is that people have free will and their actions are, some are good and some are evil. And by the way, the Rambam writes explicitly that everyone has some good actions and some bad actions. Everyone. Everyone. Um, and he takes it for granted that there'll be a variety. And we talked about the fact that this world and the next world are asymmetrical. The next world is where the majority of a person's actions, which determine his identity, are compensated. For the righteous, they, are, they exist in the world to come and they're rewarded. And for those whose major complexion is black, are excluded from the world to come. Why do you think that the US is so quick to go help Israel fight against the Palestines? Why? They know that the Jewish people in Israel are not the original people. Oh, no, 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 they are definitely not. The original people are black people and people of color. So why did one lady, Judith Shore, she was Israeli consul, say that the biggest threat in Israel is the younger, younger black community? What major problem of Israel is with the young generation of the black community. Let's live matter starts there. I had last week the dinner, sit down dinner at my house with some of the people which are considered the leadership of the black community. I have said to people when they ask me, if this capital crumbled to the ground, the one thing that would remain is our commitment to our aid. And I don't even call it aid, our cooperation with Israel. Because that's fundamental, our cooperation 
with Israel. Because that's fundamental. And you know what else, Jim? I, I just want to say this to our Christian friends, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, just to, just to call it as it is and say it straight out, you know, you, you guys are worshiping one Jew. That's a mistake. You should be worshiping every single one of us because we all die for your sins every single day. And that's exactly what's going on here. Yeah. We're, we're all God's first burner. We're dying for your sins right now because, because the Jewish people in the land of Israel are the bulwark mm -hmm. against the orcs. Mm -hmm. Okay? The orcs are coming not to a theater ne near you, but to your home. The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black. Genesis chapter 11 verse 10 explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at you. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at you. want to say peace and blessings to everyone hope all is well with you guys if my audio sounds okay uh type one inside the comment section if my audio sounds okay type one in the comment section I want to say peace and blessings to everyone apologies for the uh delay um has some technical issues and of course we had our uh, we honored our women today at our uh parayam uh, purim service earlier today had a great time and even had some technical issues over there. So not sure what's going on. So uh, over the next uh, few days, I will uh, master for us, uh, mix down those videos and um, I will upload uh, those um, those uh, clips again. I'll, I will upload the um, lessons for the last few weeks up to the We Woke Now extended channel. So. Uh, but again, want to apologize. I know it's kind of late, but hey, you know, let's just, you know, get it in. You know, we're going to do a late night uh, service here. Going to do a late night service here. All right. So let's going to get into it. Let's going to get into it. All right. Let's going to get into it. And um, like I said, we're going to keep it simple. And I uh, want to say this, family, let's, let's uh, you know, be conscientious of our how we communicate inside the chat you guys know how youtube uh functions how they operate uh they they would do anything to try to lock down the channel uh shadow ban and things along that line uh you know i've been out of that uh strike zone for a little bit it's been um probably about i want to say about eight or nine months since i had a strike since i've been inside the uh the youtube jail per, per se so let's let's be respectful in the comment section uh you know let's really be respectful in the comment section because uh we're, we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses and we have to be very careful uh not to allow ourselves to stoop to certain levels with our communication and family also uh let's you know uh you know, moderators, I would just say this, uh, you know, uh, tonight, you know, with the subject that we're covering, uh, give warnings, if not pull them, put them out of the town chat when it comes to uh, saying things that's going to put the channel in a compromising position. You know, express yourselves, but let's be careful of what words we use as far as and how we use it. You know, uh, again, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses and there are uh, those that are coming into this chat strictly to troll and they'll pretend that they are connected to uh, our community and they'll post stuff to try to uh, entice others to join in. You know, you see that a lot around election time, you have dummy accounts, dummy groups uh, created and they'll purposely target our community. When I say they, uh, people with agendas, you know, uh, those that was uh, supporting, uh, thumping for Trump and all that other stuff. And both sides, they do that. They'll create a, a blogs and they'll create uh, dummy accounts and they will seduce our people to jump right up in there and, and pretty much uh, feed our people narratives that are being 
authored by them. All right. So we had a, we have a lot to cover tonight, but let me go ahead and um, start with this clip here. I want to start with this clip. You guys uh, know the situation with Candace Owens, and I want to make this clear. You know, do I agree with the, the things that she said in the past? Absolutely not. I don't agree with her. I don't agree with uh, a ton of her uh, takes, a ton of her stances, you know, the things she stand for. Uh, many of the things I'm not going to say all of because she she do, you know, she, you know, she says some things that are truthful, but I don't, uh, you know, support a lot of the things that she support and endorse. But I will say this, you know, I was uh, watching her stand on 10 toes, 10 toes down. Right. Uh, for not throwing Kanye West under the bus, not throwing Kyrie Irving under the bus, not throwing. Uh, Hebrews to Negroes under the bus, uh, not throwing, you know, she's been very um, fair in her assessments. You know, what she said about Hebrews to Negroes, the book, um, the movie, she gave an assessment on it. Um, you know, even her stance with, uh, for example, Kyrie, not Kyrie Irving, but um, uh, Kanye West. She makes it clear that they're good friends and she knows the backstory to their situation. And so uh, what I see playing out a lot is other communities would literally try to put us at odds with one another by saying, hey, someone in your community said this, you know, lynch them, be part of the lynching process. You know, that, you know, family, come on now. You know, that's not even biblical. If we want to go to the scriptures, you know, I mean, that's not biblical, but you have many that would, uh, you know, you see evil reports. Many will run with the evil reports and they'll have it so that way they start uh, coming at, I mean, planting seeds for us to go at one another. And I'll say this real quick, and I'm, I know I'm getting ahead of myself. I said I, I'm getting uh, ahead of myself. I saw, and Sister Carol tell you, uh, I, I don't I have my phone right here. It's about to go dead. So I have it plugged up. I will for, forward some of the articles over here uh, to my email or uh, to my email. Um, pull it up for you guys. And Sister Carol, if you have the, the text message, uh, shoot, shoot it to me an email and I'll pull it up. But I'll say this. Right. Um, yesterday. Either yesterday or the day before yesterday. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna go with the day before yesterday, Friday, Friday, right? After I watched, you know, I watched the Candace Owen, Owens um, discussion that she had with uh, Rabbi Barkley uh, that took place earlier in the week, right? And um, one thing I do know is how media operates. And remember the term swift boat. You see that a lot in politics. But um, I noticed, right? Uh, under Newsweek, the notifications, you know, it was like back, several notifications were coming to my phone about Candace Owens not being able to explain herself properly by being married to a Caucasian. And I'm sitting up here like, OK. All right. You know, let me look at the you know, I was like, let me look at the comment section. I saw the comments that people going in on her. And then I looked, I noticed that the author of that particular article was from the name stealers, the community of the name stealers. Then another article popped up with the similar verbiage. And I noticed that likewise, it was the name of a name of the name stealers. Why am I saying that family? See, we have to be careful, family. Many of them will, you know, they, uh, you know, they control so much, right? I'm gonna let you hear from there uh, with it with their own doctrine, but they control a lot. And so, what happens is, you know, many will write articles to start having us separate from each other and leave each other out there hanging to dry. And when I was looking at the comment section of those articles on Newsweek. I saw that. And some of it, many of them, I can tell was dummy accounts because of how over the top that they were trying to go to uh, throw her up under the bus. Now, granted, 
You know, I believe staying within the community. That, that's, you know, I believe that the scriptures make it clear about, uh, you know, stay, staying within our community, you know, staying within the Israelite community. It made it clear uh, and set guidelines for Israel to not go out and, and, for example, marry the sons and daughters of our oppressors. You know, it, it's a lot, you know. So with that being said, I'm going to say this, you know, uh, you know, let's throw all that out the window about some of some of the views that we may disagree with. But I will say this. She did something that I haven't seen any that have a platform at her level do when it comes to standing firm against the name stealers. I'll say that straight up. I didn't see it. You could you could name the platforms. You can name a number of platforms that refuse to go, you know, jump into the arena and 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 really defend this community. You know, with the whole Kyrie Irving situation, you saw with Shaquille O'Neal, uh, the things that he did. You saw the things that uh, what's his name? Um Charles Barkley. You even saw uh Shannon Sharp. You saw a lot of them jumping right on the whole Kyrie and going in at on him. But they crickets when it comes to uh, that racist Michael Rappaport. Crickets, not a single comedian. I haven't heard a single comedian go at Michael Rappaport, but they could go at one another. I haven't heard, um, you know, the the Corey Hogan. Hogan I haven't heard. Um, what's his name? Um, Godfrey. I haven't heard Kevin Hart. I haven't heard Cat Williams. I haven't heard none of them. None of them say and you know and and shut down this guy who's been literally, literally throwing it, throwing our entire community up under the bus. Went as far as saying something about Martin Luther King. But anyway, let's go on and get into a family. But I just want to make sure that. You guys understand the situation that's going on. The situation that's going on. We haven't heard anyone. And, and I'm telling you, family, it's very few, very few that have the, uh, the, the, the backbone to say something. And I'm telling you, family, here's the bigger agenda. This is the agenda. You're going to you want to hear because this this rabbi gave you the agenda. He gave you the playbook and they're moving swiftly. They 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 are moving swiftly. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to drop in the the comment section just in case if he's up. My cousin Benaya Israel, I'm going to drop the comment inside the uh, link inside the comment section if you want to jump on. If you up, feel free to do so. And um also my sister Carol, I see you in the building. You have you, you're more than welcome to jump on. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and stretch this out here. But I want to show you the clip. You know, the viral clip. That uh, really triggered uh, what we see carried out uh, with Candace Owens and um, what's that live newswire or whatever, uh, you know, parting ways. But let's go ahead and highlight a couple of things here. Let's go ahead and play a clip that started it all. And we're going to use tonight uh, to kind of really uh, teach around this. Very, uh, it's, it's an eye opener. But let's listen to what Candace Owens, the question she asked. And I'm not going to play it because it's very lengthy. But let's go ahead and hear the question that she asked. And I may even go over to a site and just stream uh, some of it here. But let's go ahead and hear what the question she asked, here we go. I have called you, and I'm not alone in this, many Jews have called you an anti-Semite. I've also talked to people who say you have a really sweet heart, just so you know. And you and I have a number of mutual friends uh, in the world. But I think it's important to first identify what anti-Semitism is. It is a different type of hate than any other type of hate in the world. And if you and I are speaking crossways because we have a different understanding and definition, yeah, that's not going to lead to any dialogue. That's not going to lead. Look, I, I said to Scott, I'd love to walk out of here and say, you know what? I was wrong and write an article. I apologize and I was wrong. But the first piece is to 
have a mutual and understanding of what is anti-Semitism, I think that would help a tremendous amount. Would I actually totally agree with you on that. That is a perfect place to start. Could you okay, provide so for us a definition of anti-Semitism? All right, so you hear that she asked for a definition of anti-Semitism. I thought I'd put the clip here. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here real quick. I thought I had the clip when she um, when he gave a, an, an answer. I thought that was included here. Let me pull it up real quick. Let me see here. Actually, this is what I'll do. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to her channel and I'll stream it that way because it'll take too much time. Actually, I think I still have it up. And yep, let me pull this over here. All right. I'm going to we're, we are going to go to her channel and we are going to see what he has to say about what anti-Semitism is. So let me go back over here because, it. yeah, I was going to try to uh, pull it out. I thought I did, but apparently I didn't. Um, but let me go ahead and pull this over. Let me pull this over. Let's see here. All right. Let's stop this screen share here and let me pull this over. And I want you guys to listen to what was said. And, and I'm, I, I'm telling you, she 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 really held her be, her peace. She did not get rattled. She held her peace. All right. Let's go ahead and um, do this this way. All right. So. Matter of fact, I'm going to minimize this. We're going to do it like this. Let's see if I can come back over here. All right. And I'm going to do this like this. All right. If you guys can see the screen. All right. Type one. And what I'm going to do is we're going to get to his the question that she asked. Let's see here. Fair use. I want to say this again. Fair use. And one thing I will say. Uh, she's been very fair, even about using her clips. You know, many would not allow you to even use their clips. So I want you to peep this out and then we'll talk about it. Let's go down to here. Let's see if we could get to his answer. All right, let me hit pause here. Can you guys hear it? If you guys can hear, type one. If not, type two. All right, let's try this again. If not, let me try it a different way. Hmm. Oh, I should have, I may have to log in with my, my other, let me remove this. All right, let's try it this way. Let me try this again. Let me see if I could get the sound to work. Uh, we'll, we'll try this again. If need be, I'll have to open up a different browser. All right, let's see. I thought I still had it open. Let's see, do I still have it open? All right, let's do this. Um, bring this back up here. Let me try to get this straight here. Let's try this again. I thought I had it up here. All right, let's try this one more time. And I'll see if I can share this. I know in uh, Chrome you can share the audio. So I may have to, uh, I'm going to bring my sister 
uh, Carol in here and I may have to let her stay on while I switch over to a different browser. But let me go ahead and try this again. Let me see if I can pull up that interview. And then we'll sh I'll see if I can share it here. All right. And even what I'm hearing about the whole Cand Candace Owens, I'm hearing that she wasn't fired. She stepped down, even though, you know, however you want to take that. But I'm, I'm, you know, looking at some of the initially said that she was fired. She was let go. But I'm, I'm seeing communications that she uh, stepped down, you know, and she has a, a big enough platform that she really don't uh, really need uh, that particular platform of that uh, let me see here let me see if i can pull it up here all right so let's try this one more time i bring my sister carol here i see her in the back but let me see if i can get this to work let's try this one more time i'll bring sister carol in real quick while i do this how's it going sister carol hey bro how you doing tonight doing all right trying to get this um Audio to work. I'm gonna try to play this again because I want people to hear. Yeah. But um, the rabbi responded. It was just too much. And family, I do have it on. Um, we woke up. Oh, you know what? Matter of fact, I got a different way to doing it. Okay. Uh, like um, like we would say in the uh, IT world, sister Carol, I knew you. You have. I had. I'd have some type of use for you. I knew. <laughs> I knew. I, I just knew it. I knew, um, you know, you 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 benefit me one way or another. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You <laughs> <laughs> let me see here, because I, I, I have the video. Um, it's vi the video that I did uh, uploaded yesterday. I'll just pull that up. Oh yeah, because it breaks down. Because and, uh, I have that clip on it. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. All right. Let me. So, family, I want to say this again, fair use. I have to say fair use towards my own stuff because that's how uh, sometimes YouTube does. Let me fat, let me get up here a little bit. Let me see here. 11.40, this happened. 11.44 in Norwich. All right, family, this is what we'll do. We'll play his, and it's, it's lengthy. Now, I know some of you guys some are probably asking, Jesus, but they don't. well, why did I um, play the music in the background, the Jeopardy music? Uh, I encourage no, you guys I, watch Jeopardy. You understand, <laughs> you're right. I know why exactly do I have why. the, the engine energize the bunny in the background. Uh, <laughs> you just have to understand. Look at look up the commercials. But anyway, let's go ahead and play this real quick. Let's see what how he responds to Candace Owens. Here we go. I actually totally agree with you on that. That is a perfect place to start. Could you okay, provide so for us a definition of anti-Semitism? Can you guys hear it? Yes, I could. I, absolutely. I really appreciate that because I think that is the break. If we're not speaking the same language, where can we go, mm -hmm. right? So there's a man, um, a blessed memory man named Lord Jonathan uh, Sachs, who's the chief rabbi of England. He had a great mind. He really defined anti-Semitism, uh, that, that anti-Semitism is Jews have no right to exist collectively as Jews with the same rights as other human beings. Just kind of weird statements. So let's just track back to understand the history of anti-Semitism. 2,000 years ago, Jews don't accept Jesus as Messiah. For people who do not have faith, as the early Christians, as some of them have faith, some of them accept Jesus, but they don't really in their heart. And you and I know both know people like Rob McCoy who accepts it. And let me pause this real quick before we get to that portion of it, of what he says that we're going to really hone in on. He actually called the Catholic Church. He also, in this answer, Christianity as being anti-Semitic. Yes, because he, he uh, went into discussing the Latin Vulgate, which is a fourth century uh, translation. Uh, and with that, he insinuated that the word 
Quran was it is an anti-Semitic trope that led to saying that the that his community is referred to as people with horns and tails, that whole thing. Right. So he actually, in his response, in this, listen closely, family, you will hear him basically said so many words, there was a lot of a lot of stuff at the wall to make it stick, but he literally says, in a nutshell, not literally, but he actually talks around it, but he's stating that uh the Catholic Church, anti-Semitic. Because they said he said that they purposely misused the word Quran, right? Because in Hebrew, Quran transliterates to horns. You'll see that in Zechariah, right? The the uh, I believe it's the four horns, right? In that prophecy, but you will also understand that word Quran also means to recite, right? Recite, recite scripture, and you you already know the word Quran. Uh, from a Arabic perspective, means reciting, uh, uh, you know, liturgy, you know, uh, Quran passages and all that. But nevertheless, uh, but he said that translation basically promote uh, anti-Semitic tropes. It's a lot that he said, man. It's so much he said. So let's go ahead and listen to it. But I just want you to listen cl uh, clearly when he started getting into the history of the trans Bible translation, starting with the uh, the Latin Vulgate by Jerome. Listen to what he's saying. He's he's literally saying the Catholic Church, the Christian Church are anti-Semitic. Here we go. Fully in their heart, and other people who are doing it without faith, and they're, they they those who have less faith. The fact that a Jew exists, let alone thrives, mm. is a threat to their faith because how can the Jew not accept Jesus as God and still thrive, unless he's associated with the devil. So you start having these, these myths that are created of the Jew being identified with the opposite of God. This really codifies in 1144 in Norwich, England, what's called the blood Bible. And this is really important to understand, especially today in 2024. In 1144, a young boy- Now family, if you listen to what he's, he's done so far, he's taken it all the way back to like the fourth century, you know, and he used the Bible translations. He also took it a step further to now say that he the, the horns. Right. So what you hear now, he's taking it to the 11th century about the bloodletting. You know, uh, many of you guys may not understand that. Uh, in the 11th century, there was over 150 cases. Right. Uh, that was brought against the Jewish uh, community as we know them about bloodletting. And you can look up, you can look it up as in you, you, you even see references to this inside the Jewish encyclopedia 1903. You'll even see it inside uh, the different volumes there about over 150 bloodletting cases. So I just want to make sure you guys um, understand what, what he's saying uh bloodletting that's what he's referring to is those cases all right but it was over 150 and so what he's doing is you heard him mention the horns then he said the jews being referred to as the devil kind of being the opposite of god so now listen what he says about the the bloodletting here we go boys killed and the local priest says that's because the jews need to make their matzah with christian blood called the blood life, explain, explain the problems of other people on the Jew. It's just so you know, that's, that's so ridiculous, not only just on its face, but we're forbidden from even having meat that has any blood in it. This is a Torah law, you can't have, that's why, you know, we, we can't have state tartar, okay? So this gets perpetuated in combination with a fourth century, that what's called the Vulgate. I'm sorry, did you say uh, 11, in 1140 this happened? 1144 in Norwich, England. Okay. okay. This is after in the fourth century, you have something called the Vulgate. The Vulgate is the official translation of the Bible. In Hebrew, there's no vowels. And, it, and the person who translates, St. John, who translates the Vulgate, knows what he's doing is translating wrong. He puts down that when Moses comes down from Mount Sinai, he has horns. Okay, Karen, 
when actually the word was Quran, meaning that light shone from his head. So now by 1144, you have the anti-Semitic myth of Jews have horns and they drink blood. And I know people who've been asked when they went into the army and other places, can I see your horns? So this still exists today in 2024 throughout America. And I don't mean just in a little more. All right, so did you guys catch that? So he's he brought up the Latin Vulgate. That's what he's referring to. But the Latin Vulgate is actually fourth century, right? But he threw the Latin Vulgate in there saying that the Latin Vulgate poorly, purposely transliterated this, um, you, you know, uh, word Quran to go at the Jewish community as we know it. That's exactly what he's saying. He's saying that that helped push the bloodletting, the 150 cases that were at least, that were at minimum, that was brought up. You know, uh, he is painting the picture about Christianity, Catholicism, basically in a nutshell, being anti-Semitic. And he's also referring to Christ. So I want to make sure you guys pay attention to what he's saying. Here we go. I think you guys saw my Energizer Bunny going through the screen as well. Here we go. Rural areas. It exists today, these myths. That Vulgate Bible is the official Catholic Bible all the way through the 1970s. So it is, you need to understand that that's a piece of it, okay? That, that, that they're equated with, with this kind of hate. In, because it's about Jews not having the right to exist collectively, when they live in their little communities in the Middle Ages, anti-Semitism is a hate against their religion. By the time you get to the 18th and 20th centuries, when so many Jews have assimilated, they are in culture, they are in arts, they're in science, it's no longer against them for their religion, it's against them for their race. Because anti-Semitism is the oldest hate in the world and the hate that... Now, we'll start real quick. Now he's saying that anti-Semitism trans, uh, kind of transferred from being, transition rather, from being uh, religion to profession to race. Now I can prove to you guys when we, uh, I've already done it in the past, the Supreme Court views the Jewish community as we know them as being part of the Caucasian race. And the question is, when did the Jewish community, and this is not trying to offend anyone, but we gotta we gotta be real about it. But when did they when did they become a race? Even though they are multicultural, which um Jonathan Greenblatt of ADL said that they are multicultural, multi-race. Right. So how is it that they become now a single race? But Jonathan Greenblatt from ADL says that they are multicultural. And I'll pull up the, 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 the slides here in a second here. But I like to have sources because I don't like to just say things because, family, you know, we under a cloud of witnesses. But you hear what he just said. He said it went from being religion. He blamed the, the Catholic Christian church because of the Bible translation of this thing of horns and devil to then he went to a uh, profession in the 19th century. Then he uh, went from profession to race. So in a nutshell, I mean, he's covering all the bases with it. So let me uh, play the last portion of it again so you can hear the, his last comment, because this is key. Bible is the official Catholic Bible all the way through the 1970s. So it is, you need to understand that that's a piece of it, okay? That, that, that they're equated with, with this kind of hate. In, because it's about Jews not having the right to exist collectively, when they live in their little communities in the Middle Ages, anti-Semitism is a hate against their religion. By the time you get to the 18th and 20th centuries, when so many Jews have assimilated, they are in culture, they are in arts, they're in science, it's no longer against them for their religion, it's against them for their race. Because anti-Semitism is the oldest hate in the world and the hate that mutates.
All right. So he said anti-Semitism is the oldest hate in the world. You said it's a hate, hate that, that mutates. Mute, uh, to mutate. Correct. So your belief then is that the definition of anti-Semitism can necessarily change. Is that correct? It's not just my belief. It is the commonly accepted understanding in both the Jewish and academic worlds. I mean, anti-Semitism. All right. Let's stop right there. So he said this is commonly held among acad the academic world in their community. And family, we have to be real about it. That is not true. And this is where we have to pull out the award here. You know, I got to pull it out. And I'll, I'll let you um, share your comments, uh, Sister Carol, because I know you're in the back here. But I, I have to pull out. And I think, I think you guys know where I'm going to go at with the award that I have to pull out on him. Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Because... Now, you know, he's he's basically saying that it's a and, and, I, and I, I'm going to get here, but it's a gener it's generic. It's generic. They could continue to uh, add, take, move, whatever they want to say about what uh, anti-Semitic is. And we all know what the word mean, and I'll bring it up. I'll pull it up here in a sec. But the, the key is I want to focus on that mutation. And it's, But before I do so, Sister Carol, did you want to share anything? Well, I just find it rather um, hilarious that, um, that he claims this word was created 2,000 years ago when if you look the word up, of the history of the word when it was created, it was created in 1879 by a German man. Well, well, well he wasn't well, saying the well, word was created. He was trying to say anti-Semitism. I understand your point, but he was trying to say the hatred towards them has been yeah, around for over 2000 years. I got that, but she asked him specifically for the definition of the word. And he went to history that started back in 2000 years ago which has nothing to do with the definition of the word. That's the point I had an issue with. You didn't define the word. You went back to history of 2000 years ago when anti-Semitism started. No, it started in 1879 when this man created it in Europe. And that's what she should have stumped him then. If she had, I don't know if she looked the word up herself or not the history of the word, but that's where it started. Not 2,000 years ago, all of the junk that he was saying and, and prolonging time and saying different stuff. It started 1879 by a German man. Yeah, I think her approach, though, I would have sat there and let him talk because, you know, the old rule, let yes. him talk. And I think that if she would have cut in. Oh, yeah, absolutely. She would have been viewed, painted as the angry black woman. You know how of that course. goes. Of course. So she, she I, I think. The way that she held her composure, mm -hmm. even though she still stood on, uh, well, you know, her, her her thoughts, she didn't allow him herself to be intimidated by him. So I give her credit on that. But go ahead, Sister Carol. I'm sorry. No, no, you, you're right. But um, I guess personally, I would have had it pulled up already ready to go. So when he started discussing this, I would have showed the screen and let everybody see. Well, this according to this, this is when the word was created by this gentleman. Um, who lived in Europe as a way of um, a, I guess, a stance against those who come against them, your people. So it wasn't 2,000 years ago. It was 145 years ago. And we're seeing what he had to do to come out of that situation. Because it seemed like every time she goes somewhere, he put his head down to think about how he was going to come at her again because he couldn't handle her pressure, put pressing on him to um, answer questions. But go ahead, that 2000 years, remember that 2000 years guys, that's gonna, yeah, I think you go further into the conversation where he goes, he's gonna say some other years too. Yeah, so what, what I wanna do family, I wanna hone in on uh, dealing with anti-Semitism, we're gonna cover that, but I wanna deal with this real quick anti-semitism is the oldest hate <laughs> in the world and the hate that mutates that's that's his words you guys heard it he said anti-semitism is the oldest hate in the world 
and the hate that mutates. So let's um let's let's unpackage this. Let's let's uh really get to the root of what he's saying. What this really means. I don't want to just give my thoughts because I know I've I've commented on uh, some of the things that uh, the verbiage uh, a while back. Me and Benea, we did we actually did a a live on his channel covering some things here, covering uh, the uh, what I want to say the generic terms that you know that that is being used. But what does Rabbi Barkley mean by saying the definition for anti-Semitism is mutate mutations is what he's referring to. And what is the meaning of mutate? And I want you guys to pay attention to this, right? This is coming from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and this is mutation, right? It says, because if you go to mutate, it's going to point you here. It says, a significant and basic alteration, change. And then you see umlaut. Now, if you guys understand Hebrew, and I, and I taught uh, uh, an extensive Hebrew lesson, about umlauts, that is German uh, inserting vowels and so forth. And you'll hear the A sound, which is a Germanic sound in what is called so-called modern Hebrew. Uh, the segal makes the A sound with the two dots. The two dots above a letter is the umlaut. Same sounds that it makes with even if the dots are two dots below a, a, a consonant. But anyway, but the key that I want to point out, it says a significant and basic alteration change okay now let's go to this house bill because this is important this is georgia for those that are living in georgia right our brothers and sisters that are living in georgia and i have to find out other states that are jumping on this bandwagon with this bill here i want you guys to understand what's going on here and this is why we as a community have to start speaking on this and guess what other communities as well you know need to be aware of what's going on with this bill house bill 1274 now let's see what it says let's let's go to this bill let's see what this bill says it says this and this in the backdrop so i'm reading what's here but let's re let's see what it says in um paragraph five it says while there can be no exhaustive definition of anti-semitism as it can take many forms the international holocaust remembrance alliance alliance which is called the ihra working definition has been an essential definitional tool used wait a minute y'all see it's right inside the bill it says while there i'll read it again while there can be no exhaustive definition of anti-semitism as it can take forms the international holocaust remembrance alliance the ihra working definition has been an essential definitional tool used to determine contemporary manifestations of anti-semitism and includes useful examples of discriminatory anti-israel acts that can cross the line into anti-Semitism. And I didn't put the entire second uh, paragraph, well, sixth paragraph here, but it says the IR, uh, the IHRA definition is used by various agencies of the federal government and over 30 governments around the world, recommended for use by the European Council and the European Parliament, endorsed by the Secretary General of the United Nations and the Secretary General of the OAS include, included uh, in policy guides prepared by the Organization for S Security and Cooperation in Europe. All right, so just giving more information there. But the, the key here, let's go back here, right? And um, it says here that the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance working definition and a, and a bill that's pushing a law it says that this is a working definition. In other words, it's open. They can change this on the fly. They can put whatever they want into it. And I'm going to prove it here. Let's go back here just to make sure you guys understand. Let's go back to that mutation. A significant and basic alter uh, alteration change. 
All right. So we see that this house bill, it says that again, it says working definition, right? It's a working definition, but the key is it does not define the, uh, what's anti-Semitism inside the bill. It refers you to, as you see here, the International Holocaust Remem Remembrance Alliance to get the definition. So that means that they don't have to go before Congress. They don't have to go before the House whenever they want to make amendments to this bill. Like any other bill that is passed, usually they have to, if they want to make any changes to it, they have to go before, you know, they have to go through the, you know, the process of making changes to that bill. Here it says that they it, based in a nutshell in legal terms that they have an open book. They have an open book to be able to make whatever changes, define it however they wanted to define it. The word anti-Semitism, they have total control. They don't have to go back before uh, Congress or anything. They don't have to, you know, make, uh, go, you know, go through the process. All right. So let me highlight one thing here. I want to take you to their channel. I want to take you to uh, the IHRA. Let's see what they say. All right. But before I do that, let me show you what a working definition is. Right. This is wiktionary.org. But notice what it says about working definition before we get there. So you understand what it means. Working definition. It says a definition that is chosen for an occasion and may not fully conform with established or authoritative definitions. Let me say that again. A definition that is chosen for an occasion. You, you, you see that, Sister Kara? Is that crazy or what? Very much so. It says, for an, an occasion, a definition that is chosen for an occasion. Well, you can have different, different events and have different definitions for events. Mm -hmm. Because in this conversation with Candace Owens, we'll get there, the rabbi said even using the word which yep. towards uh and I'll get there, but using the word which is anti-Semitism. It's anti-Semitic. So a definition that is chosen for an occasion and may not fully conform with established or authoritative definitions. Number two, it says a definition being developed, a tentative definition that can be tailored to create an uh, authoritative definition. Correct. So it's basically said they can adjust it to however they want to adjust it. Correct. That's, that's interesting. Go ahead, Sister Carol. That's, that's interesting because we used, when I worked for the government, we used that term and we had to write back the scope of work we we're going to work on a contract. We used this definition in the in the um, reply of the, of the scope of work to let them know that at any point in time, we want to be able to expound upon this definition uh, to tailor toward what the scope of the work is being asked of us. So you can change it to the, to be, like you said, an authoritative uh, definition to meet the standards of whatever's being asked in the contract. So that's basically what they're trying to do is set up a, a um, guideline that they can use with this word to add other words or terms to it to lengthen out the authoritative of the, of the definition of the word. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. They, I mean, but they could change it however yeah, they want to change however it. However they want to. Without you going through the, that go yeah. definition. If you step on my toe, that can go in the definition. And, and remember, we were it. joking about that when we were uh, a year ago, a little more than a year ago with the Kanye West situation. Yes. Because exactly. I mentioned, you know, I brought up, you know, uh, the, the so-called laws about anti-Semitism. And basically, they just said, "Hey, they, whatever they feel, you can sneeze wrong. Mm -hmm. You 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 can you can step in, you can jump in front of the jump the line. Yep. You can be in line, you jump in the line in front of them. Anti Semitism. Right. Let me right. bring uh, Benea in here. I see him in the building. Yeah, I saw. Him. All right, How, how's it going, Cuz? See you in the building. See you up late night hanging out with us. <laughs> hey, peace and blessings. <laughs> hey, uh, peace and blessings, uh, Pastor Kelly. Peace and blessings." Uh, Sister Carol, yeah, yeah, because I was actually, 
I was actually trying to trying to wind down. I saw you. I was like, you coming online? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in the midnight hours. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I, I had to hop on because because it because it, it, it this one, you know, of course I, I'm in Georgia. I'm not state based out of Georgia, born and raised. Um, and so of course the, the Georgia law, you know, for me is a is a, a um you know, is near and dear as far as uh, being able to uh, come against it. And I don't know if, if, if uh, people picked up on it, but, you know, like that organization, because that you're talking about, so they are composed of like 30, 30 plus countries. They're composed of the United States and like 30 other foreign countries, including the nation state of Israel. Including, you know, a bunch of a handful of, of, of Russian states, right? Uh, and Germany, <laughs> to name a few. So, not only do they, ha you know, are they, um, you know, does this Georgia law give this 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 group, this entity, this that's composed of like thirty foreign states, this ability to create, you know, whatever definition that they want to, but essentially what it's doing is that it's giving this these foreign governments authority to persecute or prosecute american citizens so it's it's deeper than what um you know than what was out in like the newspaper in the news and stuff like that yeah i tell you and, and just giving them a blank check just yeah. giving them a blank check uh to literally anything that you say anything that you do anything that you question you know i mean it, you know it could be considered anti-Semitic. Uh, and even when we think about uh, Zionism, when did Zionism, which is a political party, become now you can't talk about a political party? Right. That's anti-Semitism. According yeah. to them. That, that This working definition. That's right. You know, and so uh, and I'll, I'll pull up because you, you're familiar with this um, but now yeah, I'm gonna pull this up here for so the people can see it because I noticed that it they it was um you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it looked like they added more to it since the Kanye West situation. Right? Initially, it's it's a few extra bullets. It looks like about four or five bullets that was added to here. But notice here it says calling for aiding or justifying the killing or harming Jews in the name of a radical ideology or an extremist view of religion, all right? Making mendacious, dehumanizing, demonizing, or stereotypical allegations about Jews as such or the power of Jews as collectives, such as especially, but not exclusively, the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or of Jewish, oh, excuse me, of, of or of Jews controlling the media, economy, government, or societal instru, uh, institutions. So they just making sure they got everything covered, right? But it's the, the thing about this right here. This is what Kanye West read read al aloud off his phone when he said he didn't know that if he said that he has a Jewish lawyer. He has a Jewish doctor. He has this that that would be considered anti-Semitic. Um, he and be, then he began to read it aloud. This is what he's reading right here, right? Because most most of us, when we think about anti-Semitic, you know, or Shemitic, right? Either or, you're thinking that. Wait a minute. The word Shemitic or Semitic is a subgroup of Afro-Asiatics. So how can uh, us, we the people, us Negroes, be anti-self? Being that the word Shemitic or Semitic is supposed to be a, a subgroup. Now, originally the word Semitic was, uh, or Shemitic was language-based. It was a group of languages. But as Sister Carol pointed out, you'll see around the 18th century when they began to push more and use that as a designator for a specific group of people because technically everyone that's a descendant of shem is shemitic right but anyway uh any comments you guys want to um um
comment on this here? The the thing I, I'll, I'll throw out there, family, and that is, so the the main difference with this law, the reason why this is a a a totally different animal, a dangerous animal, is because there were already hate laws on the books, and the hate laws covered things like physical, you know, physical harm to you to your person. Like so, back in the day, you know, when when the the Ku Klux Klan would, would ride and and they would you know drag people out of their homes, or if if you know that the uh, Trayvon Martin stuff or any any of the like the George Floyd stuff occurred, like physical harm, people got hurt, you know, people people got unalive. Like the hate laws covered that. I mean, and and not only did it cover it, it covered it for everybody. There wasn't one racial group that would that benefited from that above everybody else. Like everybody was covered under what this provision did was it allowed a single, it then gave a privilege to a single group Mm -hmm. against speech. Like the, the hate laws on the books were against physical harm. This was a brand new amendment that gave, that gave um, higher penalties for speech. And and this was, this is a, a direct, attack against freedom of speech family and that's why you know <laughs> you know most high willing family you know you're going to see a, a petition out there uh on behalf of african israelite justice foundation and the the purpose of the petition is is going to be we're going to su- to submit that to the to the department of justice of whom we have already submitted cases to before we haven't told anybody that but we have submitted cases to the department of justice and you know praise the most high we do have a track record of having some some success going down that route but most high willing we want to also take this issue before the department of justice and say hey, hey look these guys are coming against the the uh freedom of speech with this law and and it's a uh sp- a specific provision that gives a single group a single group privilege um you know privilege services or pri- privilege coverage over everybody over everybody else in the states and that's that's not right family Absolutely. Sister Carol, you want to share anything on that? You share your thoughts on it? I agree totally with what Benea just said. I mean, um, they're going to try their best to create these laws to benefit them according, according to what they define as a hate crime, not according to what the law that's being written regarding uh, a hate crime being a physical violent attack. This is going to be based upon how they feel, what they deem us uh, feeling like someone is put in chat, their daughter, uh, was at the middle school and someone shouted Hitler, sh- everyone, she's a Jew. That's anti-Semitism as a definition, as, as, a, as a, a ram around that to show that um, you hurt someone's feeling by saying the word, saying the name Hitler. Absolutely. Like you- and, and family, what we're going to do here, I want you guys to hear Kanye West's uh, statement. Uh, I, play, I have it in a video I uploaded uh, yesterday or a couple of days ago. But I want you to hear and you're going to see that he's actually reading from here, because, again, when you think about anti-Semitic, right, you think about this word Semitic from an academic perspective. You're not thinking about uh, when you say, let's just say, um, you know, kind of like that thing of like like what he said, um, when you say that his his lawyer is a Jew, uh, his uh doctors uh, from the jewish community he's 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 literally says he didn't think that that was anti-semitic until he read the document here so let's hear what he says real quick and then um we'll 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 continue here anti-semitic statements are never good for anybody right it's kind of like being anti-black but you know it's really interesting i didn't realize that I could be considered anti-Semitic till I read one of the definitions of anti-Semitism. Look at this. The definition says, making mendacious, dehumanizing, demonizing, or stereotypical allegations about Jews as such, or the power of Jews as a collective, such as, especially, but not exclusively, this sounds like a, I'm gonna let them go by. All right, so it says, think about it, that sounds like the type of wording that's in the contracts, right? Indeed.
such as especially but not exclusively the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or of Jews controlling the media, economy, government, or other societal institutions. But isn't that what you said? That Jews run everything? Yeah, but that actually is considered to be anti-Semitic. Right. So I didn't realize that it was anti-Semitic to say, hey, you know, I have a Jewish attorney. I have a Jewish record label. I have a Jewish contractor. I have a Do you Jewish... regret your statements? Are there statements you think you should be walking back? I mean, what, considering... What do you mean walking back? Well, you know, backing up off of them. I mean, the thing is, you've, you've lost a lot of endorsements. People are dropping you. You're getting, you know, vilified. You know, I mean, you might think you're right, but I think... You know, there's a lot, there's a whole world out there that's condemning you for, for what you said. Okay, so this right here is a chart of uh, Universal Studios, 20, 20th Century Fox, ABC News, CBS, CBS News, Columbia Pictures, uh, Warner Brothers, ESPN Sports, Fox News, Washington Post, Metro Goldwyn Meyer, MTV Music Television, Nickelodeon, USA Today, Wall Street Journal, Comedy Central, NBC Entertainment, um, uh, Google, uh, what else do we have? Disney, ABC Kids and Family, YouTube, Los Angeles Times, Discovery Network, Paramount Pictures, Facebook, Huffington Post, Yahoo, Marvel, Hulu, Cosmopolitan, Time, um, Touchstone, Associated Press, uh, Pixar, Miramax, HBO, New York Post, Lucas Arts, MSNBC, uh, DreamWorks Animation. Now the thing is I skipped over maybe about five of them because it was just unclear on this list. The red are the executives that are Jewish at these companies. Do you think they stuck together when they heard what you said? Was that, was that the... What happened? So family, you see how they changed their tone? <laughs> <laughs> you think they stuck together when they, you know, it, they were very aggressive, but then they shifted. Any thoughts? He, he said it real quick, but I don't know if you caught it, family. He said Google and YouTube. Yep. Yep. All of them. On the list. Platform. <laughs> Not just those two. Facebook, yep, uh, Instagram, X, all of them the same. Wow. You can't get around them. But this is my thing with this with this word. So if we say anything pertaining to them that even sound like it's directed toward them. So this is that going to be a universal word that can, that can be used for everybody? So if they call us black. Or they say African American, or they say the N word, or you know, nigga, niggas. Can that be placed also under the words? Is it a working definition? Not under their definition. They but get see, to do whatever they want with it. Well, we need to push to put that in the definition too. If, if you Sister can't Gary, say, you're not you're missing it. That's right? their definition. We could they they could, we can say all what we want. They could do whatever they want with their definition. I know. I got that. But if we pushed up against it and said, well, if we're gonna put this part of the hate bill. You want to add this as a, as a paragraph, sub-paragraph to code blah, blah, blah of the HB blah, 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 blah. Well, we want to add these working definitions to the word, too. Yeah, because that's you can't what I'm saying. say black to us. You can't say slavery to us. You that, can't that's say what I'm saying. to us. You can't I, say I just, words to us. I completely understand what you're saying, but that's not how it's laid out. When I read that bill, it's all about the Jews. I know. I, I'm, I'm being facetious. I, I, you know, I, okay. Yeah, because I know how I, I, I got you. Because, yeah, because I'm like, the way they wrote it out, they could do whatever they want. You know, listen to that old song, It's My Party. I could do what I want to. <laughs> you say black suit. Oh, that's anti Semitism. Uh, oh, he has a beard. Oh, that's anti Semitism. I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah, oh, Sister Carol. Sister Carol, you're. Cadillacs. Oh, that's anti Semitism. Yeah, you're bringing up the exact same argument that Candace Owens did. Yeah, you know, because yeah. she 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 had an excellent comeback. She was like, "Oh, I mean, uh, racism. I mean, because there, there's people with racism, and that's the thing about it. You know, there has been no other race on planet Earth <laughs> that mm -hmm. has been persecuted more than black folks. So that, I, mean, I was offended when he let that roll off his tongue talking about well, we've been persecuted for for 200 two thousand years it's like oh no it went to a thousand he yeah a thousand years a thousand, yeah. a thousand. It was by that time it was to a thousand 
and and especially in this country, and that, that's another thing. I think me and you talked about this past Kelly. It was like, so the justification for that bill was based off of what happened in another country. Correct. Exactly. But but here you have a people that been that was enslaved here in this country. You have a you have a people that have had hateful words and speeches against them here. Mm-hmm. And we don't have a we don't have a law yet. They're, they're quick to give us a, a, a holiday. They'll give us a day off. <laughs> Isn't that what Joe Biden does? He gives us like a day off. We're going to give you a, a day of rest. Yeah. A day of rest. But, but make sure you, you come back and check in tomorrow so we can get, so we can go back to work. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, we're the only ones that got to have bills that say we can have our hair worn a certain way. And that even part. then, still having problems. Still, to this day. You know, just to your point, um, um, Benea and uh, Sister Carol, I mean, think about it. You know, they literally make it seem as if they have gone through worse than what we've gone through. And I'm not trying to say that, you know, the Holocaust, you know, wasn't it, you know, even if it's 10 in- innocent people, you know, innocent life is an innocent life. But how can you tell, just to your point, uh, Benea, How can they tell us that they've gone through far worse than what we've gone through (laughs) when we can say every country part of the transatlantic world war is equivalent to Hitler? Every country that enslaved our people is a Hitler to us. From uh, Britain, as far as the UK, Britain at the time, you know, to France, you know, every, every, group including the religious systems because we was enslaved by everybody from the catholic church the christian church and yes you have people within judaism that enslaved our people you had uh jews whether it's, uh they called themselves sephardic jews or whether it's ashkenazi jews we have documented proof that they've enslaved our people so how can it be said that it's been they've gone through the worst of the worst where they were part of the enslavement of our people you know and of course now that i mention it man i gotta pull up this i gotta add that in here because you know how it goes um family when you mention something it's like man you gotta you gotta put it in there or they'll try you know when i say they they'll try to come at the the channel as if i'm just making up opinions Mm mm-hmm yeah, but we were part of the the Holocaust too, Pastor Kelly. Exactly. Um, you know, so exactly. that and that's another that's another uh racist tack that they do is that when when they bring up the Holocaust or they say things like, Hey, we want to, you know, teach about the Holocaust, the, the version of the Holocaust that's taught is one that's without the black suffering. When in fact the Holocaust started <laughs> in Africa Correct. by Germans. At, you know, with the you know, with the uh, experiments and the 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 the, um, the suffering and all that stuff, all that started in Africa. Then they took what they what they specialize in and in and refined in Africa, and then took that over to Germany. And then in Germany, there was a substantial black population, and <laughs> blacks had it worse than anybody else in Germany. We can, and the reason why we can say that is because of the. It was, you know, it's because of the laws and the practices that took place. Most of the like the, the soldiers and stuff that, you know, during world during the World War that were captured, you know, the white soldiers were taken to prisoner camps. Black soldiers were taken out, out back and shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. And even their children. Remember when you do the, the write up on that or the research on that, rather, you see how their children and, and literally they literally was going through a process of purging all of Germany of our people, literally. Yep. And uh, many of those soldiers that um, uh, mingled with the German women, they were literally uh, searching for their children and murdering, literally murdering, killing their children. Yep. You know, go ahead, go ahead, cuz I'm sorry. No, I was going to land back on what you said. I mean, they, they, they euthanized them, uh, you know, without, anesthesia i mean imagine doing surgery on kids without any sort of pain relief i mean that that's how they what they thought of them and that was just the children that was just the children so 
And so what I want to do real quick, family, since I mentioned it, I'm just going to read a little bit of it, but I want to make sure that it is on the record of what I stated, the truth about them enslaved, being part of the enslavement of our people. Some of you guys already know this, but every time I mention certain things, I don't like to just mention it because many will take it as if I'm just giving an opinion. But let me just show you real quick. This is from a Jewish rabbi. You guys look this book up. It's called Jews and, and Judaism in the United States, a documentary history, 1983. But this, this, these are highlights from page 14, also page 23 through 25. And I'm not going to read it all, but I just want to make sure you guys understand that they enslaved. It was part of the transatlantic world war. I'm not calling this slave trade. It was a world war. All right. It was dumbed down to saying slave trade. All right. But it says uh, Jews also took an active part in the Dutch colonial slave trade. Indeed, by law, by the uh, the law, excuse me, the bylaws of the recipe and Mauritia congregations, 1648, included an imposta. In other words, a Jewish tax of five soldos uh, uh, for each Negro slave a Brazilian Jew purchased from the West Indies Company. Slave auctions were postponed if they fell on a Jewish holiday. All right, let's fast forward here. I want to go down to right here. This third, Jewish merchants played a major role in the slave trade. It didn't just say play a role. It says played a major role in the slave trade. In fact, in all the American colonies, whether French, Br British, Dutch, Jewish merchants frequently dominated. It didn't just say they were just, you know, they had slaves. It said they played a major role and, and frequently dominated. It goes on to say here, this was no less true in the North American mainland, where during the 18th century, Jews participated in the triangular trade that brought slaves from Africa to West Indies. So let me fast forward here. Here's some of the key players here that have dominated. It was more, but here's some that, that is highlighted in this book. Isaac DaCosta of Charleston. Y'all know that's Charleston, South Carolina in the 1750s. David Franks in the 1760s. Make me think about the guy down in uh, Atlanta because uh, dealing with the whole uh, lynching thing, right? Oh, Leo uh, Frank. But yeah, every time I see that, it makes me think about him. Then you see Aaron Lopez. Right of Newport, this is Rhode, Rhode Island, Newport of Rhode Island. Rhode Island it says in the late 1760s and early 1770s. But notice what you see here again, family: dominated Jewish slave trading on the American continent. Right? These are these these are not from our community. All right. So let me show you another thing here, real quick. Let me fast forward. All right. Uh, let's see here. Anything else that I want to highlight from here? Goes on again, right? European outposts, the Jews, uh, with their years of mercantile experience and network of friends and family providing market reports of great use, played a significant role in the merchant capitalism, commercial revolution, and territorial expansion, right? Let's see here again. Uh, it says here. <laughs> you have it all up. I have it all through here. I mean, he he just he gave the receipts too. He didn't just mention their names. He gave receipts on sl slave ships and everything, or warships. I call them war warships. But it says the Jewish Caribbean nexus provided Jews with the opportunity to claim a disproportionate influence in the 17th and 18th century during the very time those years that. Uh, Rabbi Barclay, Barclay re referred to as, uh, you know, transitioning from a anti-Semitic far as a religion to uh, work to uh, race, right? But it goes on to say, West enable West Indian Jewry far outnumbering its co-religionists. All right, so you see this, you see the same thing. They dominated family. This is giving more information on it. I'm not reading all of that. But again, 
It says here, slave trading was a major feature of Jewish economic life. <laughs> right? So we see we keep seeing that buzzword major. And I, th these are just some additional people here. But this one right here about more about Lopez, the key here. Notice what they say about Lopez. They, they lay out what he owned. Lopez was said to have had, had at least partial ownership of over 30 transoceanic ships and more than 100 coastal vessels. So he dominated. All right. Any comments, guys? I just wanted to share this for the to the people. I know you guys already know this, but you know, when we mention certain things, you know, we have to show the receipts. If not, you know, people would, you know, uh certain communities and certain trolls will try to push and complain to uh YouTube. All right. But any comments, guys, before we get back to um uh walking this uh generic um working definition out yeah that's that's already covered in like publications like the new york times they've done story they've, they've done like stories on that and of course those stories weren't called like anti-semitic or anything like that so no because they wrote it yeah because they wrote it <laughs> so, <laughs> but i mean that's but that's the problem with with this uh with the um um you know with this the whole thing about anti-semitism is that you know there's racism in the way that it's applied because whenever they see somebody you know somebody of that community writes it or states it it's fine but if a black person you know says it then all of a sudden it's a you know it's a offense and just you know kind of like the, the candace owens thing that you know you want to bring it up as something that shouldn't be done but it's okay for them for them to do it but not for okay for another another race to say it mm -hmm. absolutely and um I'll play the Candace only Owens clip in a second here because I know you made, uh, made mention. I do want the people to hear what uh, Candace Owens said because she she definitely shut him shut down um, the responses that was coming her way from this rabbi. So let me highlight a few other things here. But as we see here, it says here, especially but not exclusively, the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or of Jews controlling the media. And uh, Candace went through one, uh, went to one of the articles that I've been posting for years about the media portion of it, all right? And I'll, I'll, I'll get to that article shortly. But it says, accusing Jews as a people of being responsible for real or imagined wrongdoing. You can't make this up. It says, accusing Jews as a people of being responsible for real or imagined wrongdoings committed by a single Jewish person or group or even acts committed by non-Jews. <laughs> Denying the fact, scope, mechanism, in other words, example, gas chamber, or intentionally uh, of the genocide of the Jew Jewish people at the hands of the National Socialist German uh, Germany and its supporters of excuse me supporters and accomplices during World War II the Holocaust. Notice this here: mm -hmm. accusing the Jews as a people or Israel as a state of inventing or exaggerating the Holocaust. <laughs> accusing Jewish citizens of being more loyal to Israel or to the alleged priorities of Jews worldwide than to the interests of their own nations. Family, you have OSHA laws that are here in this country that if you, uh, uh, if you are part of a protest, if you protest Israel, if you protest this community, right? If you are a contractor, you, you can't get any government contracts. Correct. If you work in the school system, right? It can affect you there. If you are a student and you said anything about that community, you can participate in, for example, in spelling bees or uh, debate teams and things along that line. All right. Denying the Jewish people the right to self-determination, an example, by claiming that the existence of a state of Israel is a racist endeavor. Applying double standards. By require um, by requiring of it a behavior not expected or demanded 
of any other democratic nation. Here's another one, right? These are some of the extra ones that was added. Using the symbols and images associated with classic anti-Semitism. Notice here, claims of Jews killing Jesus. (laughs) See, many want to, you know, you want to have the name, but you don't want to deal with, you know, the pain that comes with it. You want to have the identity, but you don't want to deal with the the consequences that come with it. So you're going to say that you're the people of the book, but then we see here that if, and this is why I say, family, when he when he began to set up his comments, uh, talking about the scriptures, the the Latin Vulgate, he's saying that in 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 a a long winded way that Christianity, Catholicism, anyone that's teaching Christ is anti uh, Semitic. All right, and I'm and I'll share some real quick, but it says here. Drawing comparison of contemporary Israeli policies to that of the Nazis. Well, they got a problem with Harry Truman. <laughs> Harry Truman says some strong words. Yep. And it's, it's documented inside his journal, inside uh, his, his library in 1948. Holding, the, holding Jews collectively responsible for actions of the state of Israel. Wait a minute. Holding Jews collectively responsible for actions of the state of Israel. Uh, And I mean, they just made sure that they are any clear about everything. Any comments, guys? This is their shield they created for themselves. Yeah, they they just criminal criminalize all Christians. Yep. Exactly. And, exactly. And exactly. the Christians are asleep at the wheel in Georgia, I'm telling you, because it's like, you know, sometimes like a, a, a law is kind of worded funny where the, the true intention and the purpose of it doesn't doesn't really, you know, they don't really understand it. But if someone were to kind of break this down, I think, into layman's terms to to the average everyday Christian be like, hey, this law just criminalized your, you know, your uh, your religion. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, when you go to Easter on Easter Sunday, when, you know, that's what that's what they do. Right. When they do that, that's illegal <laughs> because they're saying that, you know, the, the Jews killed, killed Christ. That's right. And according to this law that they just passed in Georgia, that's illegal. <laughs> so, that's, that's right. So, the, yeah, the Christians, they should be banging on the doors at the Capitol and de- demanding that that the governor, um, t- you know, rip this thing off of the books. But they don't know, you know. People no, they have no clue. They're not, nope. they're not paying attention to it. They don't know. They don't know the definition of this word that changes every hour. I mean, it changes every big hour. Time. Every hour, it changes. You know, and um, family. What I'm going to do here, just what um, uh, Benea pointed out. I want you guys to hear Candace Owens' response, and then we'll get back to. Knocking down some of this stuff, and I'm I'm going to let you guys statements are never good for anybody. Right? It sounded like being an. I want to let you guys see and hear how they uh, what they say about Christ at the town week. But yet uh, they're saying that if you say that the Jews per se kill Christ, you know, I'm you know, for the sake of conversation, I'm just using the word Jew. all right. But let's see here. The International Holocaust Alliance definition. All right, let's see here. States and around the world, backers of the bill said in. And this is uh, news about that bill being passed down in the friendly neighborhood of Atlanta, Georgia. They shouldn't have that right. Now here we go. This is this this is their conversation. Let me rewind it a little bit. Just accepted. Right, here we go. Yes, vote. And in every moment, black people or women ask for equality. Oh man, I don't even want to hear what she's oh, she yeah. criticizing the yeah. state of yeah. Israel. Fast forward a little bit. Not just my belief; it is the commonly accepted understanding in both the Jewish and academic worlds. Okay. This isn't okay. As I said, that's why I quoted. This is a quote. It's a great thing from. All right, let me go back a little bit more. I just want to make sure I got her. The whole commonly accepted. 
so your belief then is that the definition of anti-Semitism can necessarily change, is that correct? It's not just my belief, it is the commonly accepted understanding in both the Jewish and academic worlds. Okay. This isn't, okay? As I said, that's why I quoted, this is a quote, it's a great thing from Lord Sachs, uh, you know, Jonathan Sachs, it's a great thing from Niall Leckett. This, this is just accepted as the understanding of, you know, a cultural okay. anthropologist. So I, I would just say off the bat, I do not accept that definitions can just mutate. That is something that I, I could debate that on, like the definition of a woman. I mean, and I'm saying not just about Jewish people. I think that we have to have a concrete definition to work with because then you can just update and say, actually, I've changed that. And now this is what constitutes yeah, anti-Semitism. But Candace, that is the horror of anti-Semitism. So what you are saying to me is that anti-Semitism is this and does not change. What I am saying to you is that the entire world and scholars about anti-Semitism recognize that it is a unique hate. That if you define it as the, the, the that, that you should not be able to exist collectively, mm -hmm. Okay, as a collective, they shouldn't have that right. That changes from the Middle Ages with religion, the 18th through 20th centuries about race, and then after Israel is created, it's a hatred based on the nation. And until that's until that is understood, that 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 it is, this isn't something that's really questioned about among academics, theologians, Jewish scholars. I, I'm not presenting it. I, this is why I thought that I'm so optimistic about a dialogue. But I think part of it is you view that the hate can't mutate. And what I'm trying to tell you is that we have 2,000 years of history that demonstrate the exact opposite. So, that and I, I'm, I'm going to just push back very, just gently here. For me personally, if I thought that racism could just be an ever shifting uh, definition based on the experience of black people, it would be a remarkable power and I would be able to create something like BLM, which could say that everything was racist. So I am not going to be able to agree that definition should be able to transform according to what's happening during the day. But here's what I will say. If you could, just because I think it's really important um, for us to get to going through this article, because then you might be able to explain why you view it as anti-Semitism, if you could just give us what you are saying the current definition of anti-Semitism is today, that would be very helpful. The current definition of anti-Semitism today has to do with what the feelings are. The current definition of anti-Semitism today has to do with what the feelings are. The current definition of anti-Semitism today has to do with what the feelings are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> you know, you know, Kelly, you know, Pastor. Well, when um, we had my buddy Judge Joe Brown on, and we asked him that question, remember what he said? Yeah, he said there's no laws for her feelings. And I was going to put that in there and have a chance to get to it. Yep, yep. Well, it, 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 it is, is now. It, it, yeah, I was going to say that. It, 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 <laughs> now it's there. Exactly. At least in the state of Georgia, you know. Exactly. <laughs> it's a, it's a privileged law for a single single group of people. Exactly. You know, black folks who have been had uh, been the uh, the unfortunate receivers of of hate for many many years of hate speech for many 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 years don't have that um, that courtesy. It's, it's just amazing. You know, how can they justify that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, family, I'm going to show you a couple of things here because I want to get to another thing. Some that's on this kind of, I know you guys are going to have some things to say. This is who runs Hollywood. And Candace Owens also made reference to this article here. And of course, he tap danced around this because this article is from a Jewish guy by the name of Joel Stein. And notice what he says I have never been so upset. And he, at this time, He's upset that no one under, you know, that more and more the Anti-Defamation League is convincing people that they don't run Hollywood. And he said that, hey, he want, he's getting upset that people are not giving them their props for running Hollywood. This is what it says. I have never been so upset by a poll in my life. Only 22 percent of the Americans now believe the movie and television industries are pretty much run by Jews. 
down from nearly 50% in 1964. The Anti-Defamation League, which released the poll result last month, sees in these numbers a victory against stereotyping. Actually, it just shows how dumb America has gotten. Jews totally run Hollywood. How deep Jewish is Hollywood? When the studio chiefs took out a full page ad in the Los Angeles Times a few weeks ago. And of course, again, family, we're going back to uh, 2008 uh, to demand that the Screen Actor uh, Actors Guild settle its contract. The open letter was signed by News Corp president Peter Chernin, Jewish, Paramount Pictures chairman Brad Gray, Jewish, Walter Disney, Com- uh, company chief executive Robert Iger, Jewish Sony Pictures, Chairman Michael Linton, surprise Dutch Jew, Warner Brothers Chairman Barry Meyer, Jewish. I- I'm starting to feel like I'm reading Con- uh, from Kanye West quote, right? <laughs> you know, CBS Corp executive chief uh, Leslie Moon Moonves. So Jewish, his great uncle was the first prime minister of Israel. MGN chairman, Harry Sloan, Jewish. NBC Universal chief executive, Jeff Zucker, mega Jewish. If either of the Jewish, or I didn't put all that there, so I'll re- continue to the another bullet here. The Jews are so dominant, I had to scour the trades to come up with six Gentiles in high positions at entertainment companies. When I called them to talk about their incredible advancement, five of them refused to talk to me, apparently out of fear of insulting Jews. The sixth AMC president, Charlie Collier, turned out to be Jewish. All right. So as a proud Jew, I want America to know about our accomplishments. Yes, we control Hollywood. Without us, you'd be flipping between the 700 Club and Davy and Goliath on TV all day. All right. So he makes it clear. He goes on to say uh, Hollywood by um, by launching a public relations campaign, because that's what we do best. I'm weighing several slogans, including Hollywood more Jewish than ever. Hollywood from the people who brought you the Bible and Hollywood. If you enjoy TV and movies, then you probably like Jews after all. All right. So that's what he that's what he pointed out. That's in that article there. Now I dropped the link in the comment section. But let me highlight another thing real quick. Just just with scripture. Actually, matter of fact, I'm not even going to go with scripture. I'm just going to go to the Talmud. I don't even deal, need to deal with the scriptures. I'm just going to I'm going to go straight to what the Talmud say about Christ. Right. They acknowledge that he lived. Look at what they say about him. On the eve of Passover, Yeshu was hanged for 40 days before the execution took place. Come on, family. In, in, in the words of my, my, um, my cousin Benea, come on, family. I'm trying to, I'm trying to put your tone in it, Benea. Did I, did I do a good job? Come on, family. <laughs> yeah, put my almost, my almost, in. almost. My I, I can't, I can't get his base voice. You know, I got that New Jersey. Yeah, city. you gotta get that. You know, that, I got uh, that Jersey. You know, that accent. So I just can't get it. But come on, family. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Drink some hot tea first, cause. <laughs> <laughs> so they say in their Talmud that he was hanged. Mm. And here's what they say. He is going forth to be stoned because he practiced sorcery and enticed Israel to apostasy. This is in their Talmud. Even though the, the count is, is off, but still, they make it clear he was he was uh, guilty of apostasy, said he practiced sorcery, and that he was stoned, right? They even mentioned the disciples here. They mentioned five of them, but it says... He was hanged on the eve of Passover. All right. Let's see here. Here's the um, disciples here. But notice they said here, they said, Yeshua, however, it was different for he was connected with the government. So saying that he was an agent. <laughs> <laughs> saying he was a government agent. <laughs> they say that like, Miriam was a prostitute. I'm not going to go into the details, but this is the Talmud. Sanhedrin 106A. They say that she was 
a prostitute, say, plate the harlot with carpenters and refer to Christ as Balaam. And if you go further here, right, they they, they even have in their Talmud that Christ practiced necromancy. Get them, uh, get in rather, 57a. Jesus, the Nazarene, from the grave through necromancy. They said he was practicing necromancy. They also say that he's burning in hell and feces. Let me play. I mean, not, not play. Let me go to same same source here. It says here, Jesus said to him, he is punished with boiling excrement. As the master said, anyone who mocks the, wor the words of the sages will be sentenced to boiling excrement. So they even, I mean, it's more to it. I'm just giving you some, some highlights of it. But family, y'all know what excrement is. I'm not going to get into it. But they, this is what they say about Christ. All right. Any comments you guys want to uh, uh, share? Yes. And guess what? All what you read, guess what? That's anti-Semitism. Mm. Because we're reading it. I'm That's reading right. it. It's in their it's in their Talmud. This is what they say. <laughs> but we're reading it aloud. And but we're reading it. No, but you're right. Because remember, we talked about this with the Kyrie thing about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Right? Remember, because we yep. they can use their sources, but we can't use their sources. That's right. Yep. It's anti-Semitism. Yep. And racism. <laughs> and racism. Yep. All the racism. Yep. And a hate crime. Put that on there. You know, uh, because uh, I got a lot of flack because of this this video clip right here. I had an entire video out there about this clip. Did I do I have, still have it up there? Right here. I got a, I got a I lot of flack of this clip Isn't right here. Midlam made it teaches us Shabbat Adam al Kobahim of Chaya that Adam not only named the animals but he dated all the animals. But he was not able to be at peace with any of them until finally Chaba was created. I, I, I mean, dated means, I'm trying to use a nice word. What is dated? Dated means he took her out to Apizga. They went out to the Chosan. They had a little, uh, you know, Monte. You know, relationship? You know. Well, not relationship, just We're going to keep it rated PG for the G, G for grandmas, for this, um, <laughs> for this discussion. But it's, that's what he did. It says he was, he went, he went out with the animals, you know? For this discussion. But it's so any thoughts, guys? <laughs> wow. <laughs> what and that's in the Talmud that he's he's pulling out of out of? Yes. Yeah, uh the Talmud that's also in the Mishnah. Wow. You know, I did a teaching on this, uh going into the Talmud, going into the Mishnah, pulling all of this out, and it, it actually says that he was he was messing around with the animals. Also referred to Adam and Eve, a hermaphrodite. Let me get some shout outs real quick and then we uh, I'll let you guys share your thoughts. Curly girl, want to say uh thank you for the love and support. Didn't see the um the chats here, the super chats. Uh, I want to say uh Kim loves through my savior, the holy one of Israel. Thank you for the super sticker. Uh let's see here. What's the next one? I'm trying to go through it here, locking up on me. All right, there we go. Marjorie, uh, you're doing it. Marjorie Lemons, thank you for the super sticker. Also, Amaro Raglan, thank you for the super sticker, as well as Yaz Daughter 57. Thank you for the um, the super sticker and family. Let's show them some love and so uh, for, for them showing the love and su support for uh the platform here. And thank you guys for what you, uh the love and support that you guys have been doing on uh, my cousin Benaya's channel. You know, I really appreciate you guys for tuning in uh, this late night as we, uh, you know, have these this uh, very important discussion. Hope, hope, uh, hopefully more will uh, have this discussion on their platform so that way we can really be a unified front in dealing with uh, what we see the task at hand. All right. So 
uh, I'll open it up to you guys on what we just uh, read here. And um, I, I have another clip I was going to share, but I want you guys to chime in before I do so. I just, I was going to say this, the oxymoron to all of this is a Jew is no different than being a Christian. There, it's just a person practicing a religion. So they're trying to create a word, a, a protection word for their religion. It's not their ethnicity. It's not their so-called race. It's a religion. It's no different than a Muslim or a Buddhist or anybody else of any other origin of religion. If you want to go into the Christianity and break down the different denominations, the different being Baptist, Methodist, or anything else, that's just what you practice. And they're trying to push this word to cover their religion. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's all it's, I mean, about. it's about a religion. It's not about a people. They're not a people. There's a religion they're practicing. Well, the way that they're morphing this thing, it's them uh, slowly but surely, uh, little by little, trying to make it as a people. Yes. You know, because, again, Jonathan Greenblatt, um, you know, he makes it clear that the Jewish community is multicultural, yes. multiracial. Mm -hmm. You know, he goes right down the list. Right. Remember when Whoop, Whoopi got got the flack that she got. Yep. By saying that they're the same race. Correct. Well, he said he 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 came out, you know, with a tweet stating that she need to learn, you know, in other words, be put in check, just like what this rabbi is doing with um, attempting to do with Candace Owens, saying that, hey, you don't know. Like you were saying, you don't know what a rabbi is. I'm going to get into that in a second. Mm -hmm. But. You know, he said, he, you know, she should have responded a certain way because she don't know what a rabbi is. Correct. Going back to religion. You know, so, yeah, I mean, truth be told, that's what, what we're dealing with. Christianity, mm -hmm. Catholicism, Judaism, Islam, mm -hmm. those systems have enslaved our people mm -hmm. uh, and our people, unfortunately, like um, Elijah had to deal with how long a while. You know, how long are, you know, our people going to be caught between two opinions? Correct. You know, any yep. thoughts, um, Benea? No, I mean, it just kind of goes back to, um, you know, the, what I was saying before was, is that the, the justification for a lot of this, especially you can you can even hear it in his conversation with Candace in, uh, Owens. And that is a justification for a lot of this is what happened in a, in a, in a, in a different country. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, what happened over in Germany or what happened over in whatever. And they're taking that experience and then applying it to laws here in the States. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, you know, America's not Germany. You know, Hitler's not running things over here, you know. So um, I, I think there needs to be a a, um, a conversation about that. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, I... I it needs to be debated in, you know, in, in, in legislation. You know, I think people need to bring that, that fact up and have, the, have, uh, you know, that argument put out there and have them to, to defend against it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And family, this is the, uh, I'm going to pull it up real quick just so we have it here. This is what I was quoting from John, Jonathan Greenblatt. This is from his Twitter account. And um, I'll, Drop the tweet, um, the tweet inside the chat, or actually, I guess it's called X now. All right, so that's the link there if it's still up. But he says here, additionally, Whoopi's comments show a complete lack of awareness of the multi-ethnic, multi-racial makeup of the Jewish community. She needs to apologize immediately and actually commit to educating herself on the true nature of anti-Semitism. All right, so this is not me making this up. All right, this this is coming directly from, like, like they would say that saying, the horse's mouth. All right, so let's get to another thing here because we played that clip about the, uh, the, the, um, the rabbi with Adam you know, messing around with animals, right? 
But this is Candace Owens, right? I want to highlight that because this is what supposedly triggered a lot of the discussion because there's a rabbi by the name of Shmuley, right? And uh, apparently uh, he's been uh, stating a lot of things about Candace Owens for like two years, he and his daughter. And so Candace Owens responded, finally responded. And so the rabbi in basically telling her that she have no right to respond. She should not have called, should not have called him an unholy rabbi. And she she was like, "Hey, he's an unholy rabbi. You know, he's he's doing X Y Z, right?" Well, let me see if I could get to that clip and let you guys hear it, and and then um you guys get your thoughts on it. Let me I think this is it right here. Let me see. I want your your perception of when it yeah, is please. that a black person's allowed to respond. So, Candace, so first of all, all right, let me fact have rewind. a right to defend you. She was shutting him down, though. I mean, she was shutting him down. And Chuck D's words, shut him down. Um, okay, then you go on to talk about me attacking Rabbi Shmuley. My audience has already seen him attacking me over the last two years. Um, and I'm just going to ask you a basic question. Does a black person or any person have a right to defend themselves? Absolutely. When they are, okay, because that is interesting. Because Rabbi Shmuley and his daughter have attacked me and made videos of me for two years straight. I okay, have responded Shannon. once, and you have now... You're basically saying that I'm anti-Semitic for responding. So I'm just, I want your, no, no. your perception of when it yeah, is please. that a black person's allowed to respond. So, Candace, so first of all, I know Shmuley peripherally. We've probably met a half a dozen times, okay? He is an incredibly knowledgeable man. He formed the Lukain Society at Oxford. Incredibly knowledgeable man. Um, and with nine kids, right? And we have something in Judaism predates Christianity, but it's also Christianity as well to an extent, called Lashon Hara. The evil tongue, that to gossip, to uh, to say certain things like that, are are is, is really a, a, a huge avera. It's a huge sin. It's a huge thing. I don't know all the things that he has said about you. I do know he's called you an anti-Semite, and so have I. That's not a personal attack on you and your family. For you to call a man who is extremely knowledgeable an unholy rabbi and his hag daughter mm -hmm. forgetting about what he may or may not have done if he's attacked you personally if he's said whatever horrific things about you personally that you are a blankly 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 blank he's wrong of, of if he's attacked you or your children or your family your mother um for you to rather than comment on whatever he's done to call him an unholy rabbi, that is way out of line. You don't even know what a rabbi is supposed to do. So let me ask you a question. Look, dude, by do way, you view Listen that to as anti-Semitic for me to yes. respond? So it's anti, okay. So he can attack me for two years. Is he a racist, just to be clear? I don't know when he attacks you, so I can't okay. comment. So what if I say that the definition of racism changes and if you attack a black person, <laughs> uh, you're a it racist? Depends. Candace, you don't get to get away with that. It depends no, how I'm it changes. Asking, because at the beginning of this discussion, you did say you? that you can't how tell a black person. Uh, it's been I, two years consistently of him him and his okay, daughter I, attacking me. Tell, wait, 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 saying wait, wait, that I wasn't there. I, I'm asking you. I'm asking with all Okay, but if you're saying that you weren't there, why would you put this into writing? Wait, wait, isn't it, isn't it wait, coming upon you me. to research what's happened before you, you, you start saying to no, me because, that because, defending myself is anti-Semitic? Oh, let me. I got to stop that right there. Did you hear how she how she uh, turned it back on him? Did you hear how she flipped it back on him? Like, hey, wait a minute. So if she say that, you know, racism black, you know, towards blacks is a mute, uh, a movable or uh, uh, what, what do you say? Mutating. It mutates. You know what I mean? She 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 flipped it back. Good. You know, and then he said, whoa, 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 Candace, you can't you can't do that. I see what you're doing. You know, it, it's like the double standards. Any com uh, comments, guys? 
And if so, I'll meet yourselves. Go ahead, go ahead Benaya. Oh, oh no. Yeah, yeah, no, I was just laughing because uh, she, <laughs> I was like, she reminds, reminds me of somebody who likes to argue. Like, there's just some people that, that's just, they just skilled in, in, in at, at arguing, you know, and Candace is like, is like that person. And um, and when she flipped it on him, to your point, Pastor Kelly, she was like, I mean, she said, she's like, well, I mean, if so if I say that racism and it, that and it changes, just like yours, your your definition changes, like my uh, racism changes. And today it means this. And then and then that's when he said, you know, you, you can't flip it on me. Uh, <laughs> it's like the perfect argument. It was like the, the perfect uh, counter to what he was saying, you know, but uh, but yeah. And of course, then she called him out for not, you know, being up to speed on what was going on. So. Yeah, it, she yeah, she's a, a bad fit <laughs> <for Yeah. him. laughs> as far as uh, debates and and stuff like that. I mean, she's she's just one of those people that just just has that that tact for arguing. I so think she made she a was, point. I think she was at the debate team in college, right? in high school. Oh, that's that's what it is. Yep, the, the reigning champion. There you go. <laughs> yeah, she she shut him down on that one, but uh, let's see what else she says because she. You know, he was trying to get her to basically uh, apologize all through the interview. And one thing I will say, she didn't give the apology that he wanted. And he was just basically going off. But here we go. Is the, isn't it well, coming upon you me. to research what's happened before you, you, you start saying to no, me that defending myself is anti-Semitic? Is the, isn't it coming up on you to research what's happened before you, you, you start saying to me that defending myself is anti-Semitic? Candace, Candace, if he attacked you personally, if he said you were a black fill in the blank, then he should be reprimanded that, but it doesn't justify what you did. You don't know what a rabbi does. You don't know our theology. How dare you call him an unholy rabbi? How dare you go into the misogynistic, oh, sorry, excuse me, the, the, the anti-Semitic trope of his hag daughter, something used throughout the late 18th and, and early uh, through the early 20th century. Sorry, sorry, hag is now anti-Semitic? <laughs> so that is a term of his hag daughter that goes back into the witches of, of, of Eastern Europe. Why did you have to call her a hag daughter? Just Tell to be that. clear, because she's a witch. <laughs> I think she's a witch. That's not because she's right, Jewish. Right, I would call right I would call someone okay, a hag of any yeah. color. I think she's a witch. Wait, what wait, they wait, have wait, done over the last two years. I believe his daughter is a hag. I said that because that's what I believe. You may disagree okay, with me so on that, on, but to, to say that that's anti-Semitic that. is ridiculous. I would call any person okay. a hag. Candace, Candace, <laughs> um, I'm going to be very clear without trying to be insulting so please forgive me if it comes off wrong okay it's not meant to. Oh, it's fine you can insult me i don't want to i've dealt with two years of a rabbi insulting me so i'm 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 totally okay, you know, this, with this yeah i have no desire to insult anybody okay but do you understand are you familiar with the history of the grim fairy tales and the folk tales of eastern europe I, I know that we I know that we can go back and we can also say no 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 I'm asking a specific question okay. that the witch archetype of those fairy tales were specifically modeled and called the Jews that the Jews of that part of the world were called hags and witches specifically because they didn't eat the same food they had different practices and they were excluded that way as part of the bloodline. So you are saying so that, you that we can make it into by calling a rabbi's daughter her a witch. I had daughter. You have tapped into an anti-Semitic trope that goes back hundreds of years, whether you mean to or not. Okay. Now, now that I've told you that, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think maybe there are better words to call her than a hag daughter? I'm actually not going to edit my language for two people that have been attacking me for two years, and so what I'm going to say so, so is, is that what I'm going to say is that, and I'm, I want to be very strong on this. I am not going to be told whether you want to dress it up as anti-Semitism, you want to dress it up as that, that I cannot respond and defend myself. I'm certainly not going to be told that I need to be contained in how I respond after two years of consistent attacks from two individuals. So I, I wanted to say on that point, you and I will never come to an agreement. I wait, stand wait, by wait. everything I'm, I'm that not, I said I'm about him. And I'm not going to have that everything that I say, including yesterday, when he says that me finding his products and stuff that he sells and promotes as a rabbi to be unholy to say that I am only saying that because it's made in Israel. Kosher sex 
um, on the cover you see it's oh, let great me stop this right here. performance. Oh man, did she shut it down or what? Oh, she she slapped him beside his head. She, and sh what, she shut him down. Completely. Any, great guys, I let you guys get in get it in. Oh, go ahead, Sister Carol. <laughs> <laughs> but when she said "hag," I went straight to Popeye. I saw right. the hag's face immediately. And um, but it just that just goes to show you how they're using this word. Anything they they deem um, that's that's against them or mocking them if in their mind feelings again is what it is that that word anti-Semitism a hag a witch is now anti-Semitism. Now notice his justification was something that happened to them in in, in Eastern Europe. Yes, that part. Again, it's always based on what something happened in a different country. Yes, never here. So if we were to apply that same logic to us, we black folks, mm -hmm. so we could say like all the stuff that happened over on the West Coast of Africa, then we need some laws over here in the States based off of what happened to us in the West Coast of Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm sure they don't want that <laughs> no. here in the States. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pattern, family. Just now that you know the, know what the pattern is, call it out. You know, you see, you have a, have a discussion with somebody, you know, something about a similar subject. Wait for them to start talking about something that happened in a different country and <laughs> identify it, acknowledge it, and then give your example of, hey, well, I can do the same thing too. You know, and of course they don't want that. So, yeah, it's something else, Pastor Kelly. Well, see, we don't even have to go, like you, to your point earlier, we don't have to go to other countries. We could talk about this country. Right. You know, we could just do, do a comparison of any other co community, including theirs within this country. And we can say who has the short end of the stick here. See, we, like you said, we don't have to go back. We could just start yeah. right here. That's true. We can look at the educational system. We can look at if we want to just deal with here, like you pointed out, who the, the people who own those slave ships, the people who own ports. Look at all of those who, who had their hands in the slave trade or the slave war on the World War. You can't even compare the two who had their hands in the uh, the Confederate who had their hands in the KKK. You know, because yes, many people don't wouldn't uh, don't know that there were uh, uh, people from that community that was inside the KKK. Exactly. You know, we do we it's, it's it's just a fact. So if we just go off of here, we don't even have to try to go and we we don't have to try to you know like uh, massage numbers and massage data. We could just go off the car of the core hard facts here in this country. But hey, Pastor Kelly, it kind of goes back to you know how we were talking about about the um, the persecution that that happened here, you know the, the the you know great tribulation, right? How you know we really don't know like all the bad stuff that happened to us as a people, and one of the, the bad things that happened to us as a people was we were actually our first forefathers were actually persecuted for witchcraft. To your point, Pastor Kelly. Here in the States, <laughs> actually, on one of because you just reminded me, like on one of my videos, I have a picture of it. I have a picture of you'll see um, black Israelites on a stake being burned by like mm -hmm. um, I think it was like either Protestants or um, uh, Quakers or something like that, because they had like the, the weird hats on or whatnot. But that was here in the States family. Salem, so, Massachusetts. Not, there you go. Right. So all right. that Salem, he's right? talking about. Go ahead. Pastor. Place of peace. Right. No, no, I'm just saying the place of peace, right? The sign, <laughs> right? I'm just touch it on what you was mentioning about uh, uh, the the um, eclipse coming up. But go ahead, cuz. No, no, that that was it. I just just wanted to point it out, saying, hey, you know, I mean, that was that was us here over here in the states, and that's to your point. Thank you for bringing that back home. Is that that was us here, <laughs> and then you know, let's let's deal with here first before we start dealing with some someplace else. Absolutely. So if we again, if we dealt with here, 
you know, because even when we start looking at the, the civil rights laws, you know, I could pull it up and show you how now we're becoming an afterthought. We are literally becoming an afterthought as a community for the protection that was put in place in the 60s. This is why it, it kind of uh, it, it rubs me the wrong way. Well, I'm not going to say it the wrong way. It rubs me in the right way because it, 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 it um, motivates me to continue to to teach this stuff and speak on it. But when I hear them say we were, we marched with you guys in civil rights. We was there with you. When Martin Luther King, you know, we we had, we, we, we was there with you guys. Mm -hmm. When we look up black, blackface, who dominated the blackface minstrels? When we look up, like we just talked about the transatlantic world war, who were, who dominated that world war? Who is to so basically uh they were part of our affliction. Mm -hmm. Period. You can't get away from it. Every country, every every group that within this country was part of our affliction from the Spanish, right? You know, because yeah, we family think about it. Spain, you know, the Spanish, that was the, they enslaved us. If we look at the religious systems, we could go right down the line. We've been enslaved by every last one of those institutions. Any comments, guys? And I'm going to show this clip once you guys give some thoughts here. No, he just hit the, the nail on the head, cuz. He did. Yep. Well, I'm going to show another clip here, right? You know, uh, about this kosher, right? You know, I mean, and this is what uh, Candace Owens was saying when she called him um, the Rabbi, Sh um, Sh what's his name, Shmuley, that's his name, Shmuley, right, uh, called him an unholy rabbi because she mentioned how he sell sex toys with his daughter. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a fact, family. Now, I want to show you a clip with him. Uh, with his daughter, he and his daughter promoting uh, sex toys and got got graphic. You know, it, it, it was kind of weird, you know, to see that, you know, because I, I can't imagine even having conversations like this, uh, you know, around my daughter. You know, I just can I can I can't even imagine that. But anyway, let's see what he he says, you know, and I have I have three daughters and I cannot imagine having these type of discussions. Right. But. Here it is. Let me see here. Kosher sex. Um, on the cover, you see it's great sex is a calculated performance, and kosher and kosher and kosher sex is a total submission to instinct, where you just let yourself go. Hi everyone. Out of an abundance of gratitude. To our friend and brother Muhammad Ishab, who debated me on Pierce Morgan, millions of people watched it. Income Heat Company, the final runs based on my book. He gave us international promotion, and in recognition, what are we doing for him? So we're gonna have the Muhammad Hijab discount, and you can put it in the promo code at the end of checkout. And as you check out, if you're buying a vibrator, he kept on bringing up vibrators in, in the debate. If you're buying lubricants, he kept on bringing up lubricants. Hannah, in the regular classes that you and I do, and the advice we give people writing in. Um, a lot of them are men who are dealing with a lot of aggression in their lives, a lot of false machismo. They know that they're uh, overcompensating. They're, they're overcompensating, and what? And, and they're they, and they they're overcompensating because they feel that they're kind of miniature in a physical department when they really should not feel bad about that. I actually did a post on this. Sex in Judaism provides the most intimate way of knowing someone, and I think in especially in marriage, it's very hard to maintain lust. And so I wanted products to bring to people that don't substitute their husband or their wife. It's something that can enhance the experience. Let's say a lesbian or a gay couple come in. Is there a different message for them? Because I know some religious groups might not be so accepting. Um, anyone who believes in commitment and, and bringing love into this world and being intimate with someone and wants to learn, um, they're welcome here. It does say in the Torah that there's there are issues with homosexuality, but you know, my dad, um, we were always brought up with the idea that if, you know, there's 613 mitzvot for everyone to keep, and if you can't keep one, you keep this or two, 
or whatever it is, whatever number, you keep the rest and you do as much as you can. That's Judaism. Wow. Any <laughs> thoughts, guys? Well, Tel Aviv is the largest homosexual um, country in the world. So it's not surprising that they would have a kosher sex store. Man, man when the, the most high come back, ooh, man. <laughs> woo, man. Oh, goodness. Yeah. He might, he might send fire from, 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 from Mars <laughs> to, to cleanse that land. I mean, good gracious. Wow. And, and their pride month is unlike any month of any, any pride party in Tel Aviv. So, yeah, I'm not surprised by any of that. Yeah. That's crazy. Cause I think Candace was, was being reserved <laughs> in her words, you know, in her uh, defense of herself mm -hmm. when, it, when it came to that. So, but wow. guess who owns Pornhub? They do. Who owns what? Uh, Pornhub, Karen? Pornhub, the site Pornhub. Okay. Oh wow. And every That's publication, crazy. Hustler, all of them. Remember all those porn magazines? They own all of that. Wow. So it's not surprising. Yep. Well, that that Aleph and that Tav. <laughs> <laughs> when it when it's when that that uh, message is is completed on the eighth family. I'm not in the date setting or anything like that. And like Pastor Kelly mentioned in an earlier po earlier um, video post, you know, uh, don't do anything crazy. Like go out and what were folks doing, Pastor Kelly? Like se selling their, their houses and and <laughs> yeah. you know do doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Like we're not saying doing any, any of that stuff, um, but you know, I'm looking forward and I'm looking forward to uh, a, a time when. You know, the, the Most High comes back. I just, I just put it to you that way. Exactly. And now we yeah. have why he's coming back with a vengeance. Yeah, and and I think um, can you guys hear me? Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I know my mic has been acting up, but for me, it's like even w what makes it weird is to see a father having that type of discussion with his daughter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, even if it was his son, I would still feel the same way. But you, 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 you're with your daughter, and you having that type of discussion with your daughter. And to me, it's like, wow, you know, that that that's to, to me is weird. You know, to have that type of discussion with 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 your daughter, I I can't even imagine. You know, uh, what parent would want to have, especially that type of business with your child. <laughs> That, that's that's just weird i mean just even you know watching and listening it's like wow you know i i i just don't understand it I, i'm not trying to understand it but yeah yes isn't oh, that ahead. part of their isn't that part of their their writings that um they can do certain things with their children well, uh, I was going, you know, I was going to put that in here for us about what the Talmud says about uh, pedophilia and all those mm -hmm. different things. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just didn't have time. I may have to pull it in since you brought it up, Sister Carol. Well, yeah, I'm just putting it out there, you know. Since no, we're well, there. you know, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to go there, <laughs> you know. But, that, but, that, but, that but once you mention something, I got to bring that, it up because you know, what, right? But that explains what they're doing. They're just practicing their what their what their rituals of their writings that you know is anti-Semitic to us. Let me see here. Bear with me one second. Um, let me see if I can. Sister Carol, starting stuff up in here. Hey. Now, like but, um, said, you want to be starting something? Well, starting we'll something. we'll say this, family. Um, We'll read the, the, the Talmud about, uh, I'll, I'll give you some points about what the Talmud says about that. Now, I want to make it clear so no one take our words out of context. We're not saying that this rabbi is having right. or had an inappropriate relationship 
with his daughter. So I just want to put that out there because you know how it goes. People could take something out of context thinking that that's what we're saying. Correct. So I want to make sure that that is not taken. Uh, what what is uh, what was said is not taken out of context. We're not saying that he had an inappropriate relationship with his daughter. We're just simply saying that that is a weird uh, discussion to have. But I do want to show you guys what the Talmud say about pedophilia. But let me pull it up here in a second. So you guys, if you guys want to hold hold it down while I pull up this slide here real quick, go for it. And now you guys are quiet. What's up with that? <laughs> I'm in the chat. I'm up in the chat. So any any uh cuz while I pull this up, anything you want to share in addition? Yeah, that yeah, that one. <laughs> no, I'm yeah, it's, it's I'm kind of speechless cuz I mean it's that's that's a uh, um you say weird, man. It, it it's in it, to me it's inappropriate. You know, it's Ooh. like um yeah. Um, I would not condone or support <laughs> my daughter doing any of that mess um you know she would definitely hear it from me like you, you better not start no store um with some uh energizer energizer bunny battery powered uh <laughs> you know toys or whatnot but um yeah so yeah that's the fact that it's, it's condoned it's as to me it's in like um sister Carol was talking about about you know Tel Aviv and and all the other craziness that's going on over there. It just it just yeah to me it, it just un, under it's it's I <laughs> lost a word man. It's like it just reiterates the importance of that land being cleansed, man. Because mm -hmm. if just think about it, like if this was during the time of Abraham, Isaac, and and Jacob, and they were doing that stuff. The time of Israel, man, the Most High would be bringing all kinds of plagues, swords of of, of vengeance, you know, all kinds of stuff would, would be coming against our people, right? You know, and that's, you know, one of the things that you can look at and say, well, well, if y'all the people, then shouldn't these plagues be coming up on y'all if if you having all this 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 mess going on in the the Holy Land? Because according to the uh, Torah, you know, you should be you should have some plagues upon you right now. If you're having that sort of parade in your your city or or if you're having those types of stores um, in your communities. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let me say I almost have it here. If you guys give me a couple of more minutes. But yeah. But again, folks, yeah, uh, family, you know, just uh, like I said, just keep keep your eyes open uh, for uh, a request for a, uh, a petition. And so if you are open to participating in uh, a, a notification going out to the Department of Justice uh, to, um, you know, notify them and and complain about the um, uh, in particular this this. This particular petition has to do with the law in Georgia. And now Pastor Kelly did mention that, you know, there are I believe there are other uh, cities or, or states in, in which, you know, this the same sort of sort of legislation is is being pushed or attempting to be pushed. We don't necessarily have a good idea of all the states in which this uh, type of legislation is being pushed. And what I'm talking about is the legislation of anti making anti-Semitism or making speech illegal because you know forget the, uh, the whole thing about it being related to anti-semitism the fact that they're making speech illegal right because the existing and the, the existing hate laws had to do with physical harm like you know people actually doing harm to other people but this is the this is the first time that someone is giving um a, a protection against speech that they don't like or you know well, basically, speech that they, don't, that they that they don't like, and it's only given to a specific people, right? So, um, again, if if you are open to signing a petition, we'll most high willing will have that petition up this week, and then uh, we'll let it probably run for about a, maybe like a week or two, and then once uh, we have 
have a, a week or two's worth of signatures. We'll then turn around and submit that to the Department of Justice. Now, family, we know this is Babylon, <laughs> so they might turn around and block this thing at the rim, but that's fine. But at least at the very least, we're letting them know that we see this and um, and that we are not OK with it. Absolutely. And go ahead, go ahead, cuz I'm sorry. No, that wasn't me. I'm not sure if that's uh, you, Sister Carol. I'm sorry. I had to step away for a second. I missed what okay. some of the okay. said. I, no I can hear you, but I had to come back to catch what you're saying. Okay. Well, family, this is what uh, Sister Carol mentioned about the Talmud with pedophilia. And again, I want to make it clear we're not saying that uh, or accusing this rabbi of having uh, an inappropriate relationship with his daughter but just merely pointing out what the Talmud says about pedophilia. So I want to make sure we're clear on that, but let's see what the Talmud says about pedophilia. All right. This is coming from the Sanhedrin uh, 54B. It says in the case of a male child, a young one is not regarded as uh, on a par with an old one or what is it as one? looks off right there maybe maybe um a typo there from when i copied it over but anyway it says here uh in a nutshell it says what is meant by this rob says uh peter rusty and you know what that is with a child below nine years of age is not deemed as peter rusty with a child above that you, you this is in the talmud family it says Inappropriate relationship basically with a child below nine of age is not deemed as pederasty with the child above that. Samuel said pederasty with a child who's below uh, three is not treated as with a child above that. What is the basis of their di dispute? Rob maintains that only he who is able to engage in sexual intercourse may as the passive subject of pederasty throw guilt in other words upon the act of offender whilst he who is unable to engage in sexual intercourse cannot be a passive subject but uh, when we go to the footnotes to get clarity 54b it says the reference is to the passage above i mean passage subject of sodomy as stated in supra 54a guilt is incurred by the active participant even if the former be a minor, an example, less than three years old. Now, however, it is stated that within this age, a distinction is drawn. All right. So what is the age of distinction? Again, just to make sure we clear with the Talmud, it says, if uh, uh, footnote 24, Rob makes nine years the minimal. But if one commits sodomy with a child of lesser age, no guilt is incurred. Samuel makes three the minimal. And then it goes on in uh, 25, for note 25. It says, at nine years, a male attains sexual matureness. And then for note six, thus the point of comparison is the sexual matureness of women, which is re uh, reached at the age of three. All right, so this is coming out of the Talmud. All right, according to the Talmud, an adult man and woman are allowed to have intercourse with uh, underage. It says here, a small boy who has intercourse with a grown-up woman makes her as though he were injured by a piece of wood. All right, it goes on to say, a small boy who has intercourse with a grown-up woman all right. When a grown up man has intercourse with a little girl or when a small boy has intercourse with a grown up woman or when a girl had uh, was accidentally injured by a piece of wood. So saying that if a grown up man has intercourse with or, or grown up an adult with a young boy or girl, it's it's treated as if someone accidentally got a splinter. You know what I mean? Uh, in their hand, you know, it's treated as if they had a piece of, uh, you know, a splinter in their hand. So it means when a grown up man has intercourse with a little girl, it is nothing. 
For when the girl is less than this, it is as if one puts the finger into it, the eye. But when a small boy has intercourse with a grown up woman, he makes her as girl as a girl who injured by who is injured by a piece of wood. And with regard to the case of and it goes into that. So here's the footnotes. Although intercourse of a small boy is not regarded as sexual act, nevertheless, the woman is injured by it as by a piece of wood. All right. Goes on in um, footnote seven. It says here. So it says uh, an example. Tears come to the eye again and again. So does virginity come back to the little girl under three years. And make sure you guys understanding what I'm reading. I'm reading. Let me see if I if I have it here. If I could zoom in. All right. Because you know I do these screens. So I made. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Um, uh, I I. I, I didn't think about it when I did these footnotes. I'm gonna copy these footnotes, right? Because I, 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 it's over here and further up. So my apologies, fam. I can't show you it. All right. So, any thoughts, guys? Just goes in line with everything they do over there and what they're trying to bring here. Well, and and, and this is guy. I just want to make sure, just so that way we don't get red flags. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I, I just don't want to generalize it. Because you know, when you generalize no. it, they, you know that's what they, you know, right. nowadays with the way that these laws are being pushed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just want to make sure we're more specific with what we say because you know how it goes. Yep. You know, so but family, just wanted to let you see within their own literature uh, what uh, the Talmud says. And um, it's up. It's up to them. It's not for us to defend it. Nope. We just read to you what it says. But I want to make sure you understand that we are not here uh, saying that this rabbi here uh, that we played are. I mean, had any type of inappropriate relations. But we are referring to uh, his uh, interact. You know that 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 you know selling uh, sex toys or expounding on that with his daughter. That just. To me, that that's like um, Benea said, that's that's inappropriate. But, you know, I, I can't roll with that. And then um, for me, too, is even when they were asked about a homosexual couple. Did you guys catch that? Yes. You know, it was like she was like, hey, you know, um, even though the Bible doesn't really uh, promote homosexuality, so to speak. I'm just paraphrasing. She said, but her dad teach that there's 613 laws. Mm -hmm. And if they, uh, you know, try to keep as much of what they can, then they cool. Correct. You know, <laughs> any any comments, um, any thoughts, Benel? <laughs> I'm trying not to comment on that one, man. That's That was just bad all the way around. I mean, yeah. it, it, it reminds me of, um, you know, because, you know, when you're looking at history, it's, um, as often as I do, it kind of reminds me of, of when, like, you know, part of the history that, that I that I that I study is like, you know, when our people were sent over to like Spain and Portugal. And and then you have like you have that event in like 711 A.D. when the Moors conquered Spain and Portugal. And uh, for a time, you know, it was a, ut a utopia for our people, you know, for Israelites in, in you know, it over. They call it the. Iberian Peninsula, but it was, you know, Spain and Portugal. And so for, for a time, our people flourish. Um, you know, we could we governed ourselves for the most part, uh, while at the same time over in, you know, regions, uh, uh, our people that were scattered to other countries in the region, you know, they were getting persecuted. So they heard about this place called, you know, Spain and Portugal, where, you know, life was good. So everyone flocked over there, flocked over there. And we, you know, we lived a good life. You know how people say, you know, live your best life. So we were living our best life over there. Right. But get this family over time. So they said that somebody showed up with a Talmud. And, and, and in fact, they actually brought someone over from Babylon to teach the Talmud over 
to our people in Spain and Portugal. And guess what happened, family? Almost immediately after that, the teaching and the acceptance of, of what was in there, all persecution started happening over in Spain and Portugal. And you know, if, I mean, you know the story, family. Got kicked out. Transatlantic slave trade, or like Pastor Kelly would say, the, the transatlantic war, world, world war. We got scattered all over the place, and here we are today. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so that that uh that book, family, I'm telling you that that thing has has been a, a detriment to us big time, more than you know. So, yeah, yeah, man. it's a lot to a lot to unpack, man, and and I mean, it, like you said, it's. It's a hard discussion, you know what I mean, to have, you know, when you start looking at, uh, you know, what our people have been subjected to. I mean, it, it's a hard discussion to have. And I, I definitely understand uh, where you're coming at uh, with that, Benea. And for me, family, in a nutshell, uh, I encourage you guys, if you haven't, uh, go and watch uh, the interview. It's so much in there that you can you can take out of it, I think. He says, I think he did say something. Let me see if it's in this one. If and they not, were excluded that way as part of the blood line. So. Yeah, let me play a little bit more. Then we go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, but let me see here. Uh, let me see. Because I, I think she says something else. Let's see here. So you are saying so that we can make it. Into by calling a rabbi's daughter, or a witch, a had daughter. You have tapped into an anti-Semitic trope that goes back hundreds of years, whether you mean to or not. Okay. Now, now that I've told you that, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think maybe there are better words to call her than a hag daughter? I'm actually not going to edit my language for two people that have been attacking me for two years. And so, what I'm going to say so, so, is, is that what I'm going to say is that, and I'm, I want to be very strong on this. I am not going to be told whether you want to dress it up as anti-Semitism, you want to dress it up as that. That I cannot respond and defend myself. I'm certainly not going to be told that I need to be contained in how I respond after two years of consistent attacks from two individuals. So I, I want to just say on that point, you and I will never come to an agreement. I wait, stand by everything I'm, I'm that I not, said about him, and I'm not going to have that everything that I say, including yesterday, when he says that me finding his the products and stuff that he sells and promotes as a rabbi to be unholy to say that I am only saying that because it's made in Israel. Kosher sex um, on the cover. You see, All right, it's I'll stop it right here. Man, did she slam it or what? Yes, she did. <laughs> she slammed it. And I think she followed up right here. Let me see here. And then we'll wrap it up. Let me see here. But my suspicion is that people that are watching this. Oh yeah. This are is where she went there with the, um, love into this world his approach and being with someone and wants to learn um they're welcome here it does say in the torah that there's there are issues with homosexuality mm -hmm. but you know my dad um we were always brought up with the idea that if you know they're sick i'm expressing this in case you are I'm expressing this a lot right, of let me rewind this a little bit more if you can't keep one you keep right, here we go two, or whatever it is whatever number you keep the rest and you do as much as you can that's judaism what it looks like to a lot of people, and I'm going to tell you this, and I'm expressing this in case you are an individual, as I'm sure you are, that is concerned about the rise of anti-Semitism. But my suspicion is that people that are watching this are going to think that now we are using the word anti-Semitism like BLM began using racism, right? Which is to say no. that you cannot, let me finish my statement. I'm just telling you what I am going, my, this is my suspicion. And I have tons of Jewish listeners, but Given what you've said about Dave Smith, who is a libertarian, he is not a far left liberal. He just does not support what Israel is doing. So in this, you have said that Jewish people, you, you've made comments about a lot of Jewish people who maybe don't agree with what's happening in Israel. You are now saying that a person who's been attacked for two years still needs to be careful in how they approach a Jewish person that's been doing the attacking. No one is going to accept that's that. Not what I'm saying. That's that, that's Kenneth, ridiculous. Kenneth, and that's then to not say this said. particular word, it sounds no, like Kenneth, everything Kenneth. that anybody says. It needs to be first need to and weigh it against the feelings of somebody and their history. You, I can find <laughs> examples of black people being called witches. I can't then say that nobody can ever call a black person a witch. You know, even if it has what happened in Salem, you, you could you could go on and on, right? 
But the point is, is that if you're a black person, you've been attacked for two years. I don't care if a person calls him a rabbi. In fact, I would question what it means to be a rabbi. Maybe you can explain. If you have been consistently attacking and threatening somebody, literally, he gave a quote to the Jerusalem Post, which actually I like the Jerusalem Post. They report on things very accurately, in which he says that he wants to bankrupt Candace Owens. That is a direct threat to somebody's livelihood. It is despicable. And because you call yourself a rabbi, it does not mean that people cannot say but it is pointedly ridiculous that you are using finances as a mode of threat against people because you don't like their speech. It is ridiculous. And let me tell you what, that leans into an anti-Semitic trope about Jewish people and money. For a rabbi to stand up and say, okay. let's bankrupt yes, you can talk her. over me all day. You can scream. I'm not screaming. I've let you talk a lot. That's not, that's not fair. But, I've but let you talk a lot. To all my Jewish... Did she go into what? <laughs> oh, she was. She was Mike Tyson in him. Yeah, <laughs> she checked him. She yeah. checked him. Mike she checked Tyson him. upside the head. Every, and, and you can tell he was so boxed in and frustrated. Whenever he would put his head down, I knew she had him on the ropes. He could not come out of that situation. He wanted Man. her to stop, and she was just, just throwing him, throwing him, throwing him. Yeah, I think like I say, the most most powerful um, uh, argument that she put forward. I mean, she put a, you know multiple, but one of the most powerful uh, arguments she put forward is that she kept relating it back to racism. She That's was like, right. okay, well, if you're gonna be able to do that, then black folks should be able to do that. And That's of right. course, and of course, you you, you kind of you can kind of hear him go, well, 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 well you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. you so know, is, is this how he responded to her? Because um, is this what what you're saying? He was responding like how she cut him up. You know, girl, right. I don't know. Is that right? And the bird did what? Ooh, I said, uh, bird, get back, fly up, fly away, yeah. be gone, bye, up in the sky, nice try, bye. <laughs> <laughs> she had him like that, huh? <laughs> You know, I, I, I had to put a little humor in it. <laughs> yeah, she was doing a rope of dope on him. <laughs> Straight up Muhammad Ali. But um, no, nah, but she she did a great job. And I'm going to tell you, I, the way she held her composure throughout it, because, um, you know, he he did say say some things that would be offensive, uh, very offensive. I, I don't know if I would have been able to hold my composure the way she did. I I would. You know, he probably would have ended, you know, because I would have had to bring some stuff up. You know what I mean? I, I, I you know, but again, I have to give her uh, props for how she handled it. And like you said, Benea, uh, he must have, or I think Benea fell off accidentally. Uh, yeah. But as he pointed out, she must, you know, she she's a good debater. Mm -hmm. You know, and she let him talk. You know, you know how it goes. Let him talk. And she responded very well. But um, let me see if he's coming back in. But um, any any other things you want to share, um, Sister Carol, before we uh, wrap up here? I ain't real. I didn't even realize it's like almost three thirty. Yeah, morning, yeah. I'm just, I'm just. It's just amazing how, whenever she did bring up our people, he did he did not want to touch it. I I, I don't ever want to say anything about African Americans and black people, but no. If you if you if you think you can say these things about regarding your people, then I should be able to say some things about my people. In regard yeah. to the same way you're going on with, with what you're saying, he did not want to put us in the same category with what they're trying to do for his own people, and he knows full well the racism and the oppression that's been done upon our people. Yeah. More so than anybody else, their people know. Yeah. Yeah. But he wouldn't put his toe on that. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, family, we really appreciate you guys for tuning in tonight. You know, I know um, we, we started a couple hours late, but um, just wanted to just um, have this discussion. Didn't want to, uh, matter of fact, here's Benet, I jump it back in we just want to have this discussion you know bring you know kind of bring you guys up to speed of what actually went on what took place uh again i encourage you guys go watch the video don't allow your thoughts or what you you know 
it, uh, uh, your dislikes of some of the some of her views hinder you from watching the video and at least uh, speaking the truth on this situation. Because again, uh, I, I think she handled herself very well. And um, as she expressed in the video, you heard him heard her say like, hey, you, you just admitted that you didn't watch the video, but you wrote a whole article as if you watched it. So she, she, she said a number of different things. Um, but Ned, um, any any um, additional things you want to share before we wrap up? Yeah, no, I, I, I think that there was a, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like a, a strategy person. So, you know, I like to watch um, how, you know, I like to watch strategy. So I, I like her strategy, like the strategy, the strategy that she executed against them, you know, as far as like being able to compare, you know, certain things um, that he's trying to rely on to to things that's going on in the, in the black community, like racism, like we talked about before. And also um, the, you know, the pattern that I, I pointed out earlier as far as the justification that takes place in a different country. You know, I think those two things um, you can take from this interaction that we can then use, um, you know, to we can we can use in our, our arguments <laughs> against what, what they're trying to push on us as far as like the anti anti-Semitism against our community. Yeah, absolutely. 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 So, yeah. And there's a lot of um, uh, as to your point. We can we can all take some notes from how she approached it. Stay mm -hmm. on, you know, the biggest thing, stand on topic. You know what I mean? Not getting uh, frustrated to where when you have in certain discussions, you make sure that you stay on subject. And I think she did very well with that. I was like, wow, OK. I mean, the way she sat back and like you said, she had a strategy with comparing it to race. And I believe that's where the frustration sound like it kicked in. Mm -hmm. All right. But um, we're going to go ahead and get ready to wrap up. Really appreciate you guys. I know we had a, a, a lot that we discussed tonight. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in tonight. If you haven't hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed to this channel, subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you feel like you already subscribed, double check to make sure because uh, YouTube have it has a tendency of unsubscribing our subscribers without them knowing. And so I, I encourage you, if you feel like you already subscribed, double check to make sure you still subscribed uh, to the channel. But hit those like, uh, those, get those thumbs up, hit those likes. Uh, anything that, uh, final words you want to share, Sister Carol, before... Uh, we wrap it up. Anything you want to, um, you know, the garbage can award that you want to give? I just want us to make sure that we take note of what took place with her and um, this rabbi, on these rabbis, rather, and how um, they're moving, how they're moving with this word, how they're um, going to try and put us all into this situation where we can't say anything. Um, with freedom of speech that we're supposed to have, uh, that they're trying to um, whip us with the weaponized word that they created. And we need to be um, aware of how they're operating. In our jobs, wherever we are, we need to be conscious of how they're moving with this. And we need to put that word in the trash can where it belongs absolutely absolutely let me get that trash can out all right uh because you got the floor um anything that you want to you know find the words you want to share with the people and also if you want to share with you have um some of the things that, that you have coming up on the um channel because that matter of fact i think you have a discussion um, tonight, right? Coming up. Yeah, I guess it is in, in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks again, Pastor Kelly, um, for you know, inviting me on. Uh, good, uh, good discussion. Great discussion. But yeah, later, later today, I think we, you know, I do have a, um, a video coming out where we're going to continue to continue the discussion about the the signs uh, that's coming up, the, the Aleph and the Tav, and also review some additional 
things that we did not did not discuss the first first go round, and I think you'll find interesting uh, as far as um, you know some additional revelations there. But yeah, so we'll we'll cover that later tonight. I think that that's uh, set up for uh, 10 p.m. Eastern. So definitely uh, join family if you can. I'll try to keep it short and sweet. Uh, but you know, you know how that goes. <laughs> but uh, in addition to that, family, um, uh, just to kind of reiterate, yeah. So definitely, keep, you know, please keep on the lookout, family, for a, a petition that we will start socializing out there. Most high will, and I'll have that out. Uh, my plan is to have that out this week. And again, uh, the intention of of the uh, petition is just to, you know, show how many you know show everyone that's concerned about this uh law that's in georgia because you don't necessarily have to be in georgia to be impacted by this family because it's being rolled out everywhere and you know it's one of those things family where this is a direct attack on freedom of speech it, this is not a israelite thing this is not a christian thing this is an everybody thing because like we pointed out before was that the you know that little um insert that they have about you know the jews killing jesus that impacts all Christians, <laughs> all Christians. And the fact that you don't see people lining up with picket signs, banging on the doors at the Capitol just tells me that they don't know that they just got they just got gut punched by this this bill that just ramped that they ram right through in, at the 11th hour of the night. So just want to bring attention to it. Let, let everybody know about it. And then, um, yeah, start a petition and we can get that. We can send that off to the, the Department of Justice. And uh, yeah, just go from there. So, but that's it as far as that's concerned, and as far as uh, this this uh, discussion here. But yeah, Pastor Kelly, I'm I'm definitely going to take some notes, some lessons learned, <laughs> and um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll uh, kind of use some of those arguments going forward because they're they're legitimate arguments, you know, that Candace Owens always brought forward. Absolutely, absolutely, definitely appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. We definitely going to take notes and. And, and again, family, participate. It, it's time for us to get out of this spectator mode. We have to participate. And um, anyone you want to throw inside the garbage can, but now you? Uh, well, I'll, I'll throw in that that ever changing having having a definition that uh, how did he say it, it, it mutates? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll, the, a mutating definition. <laughs> I'll throw that in the garbage can. Absolutely. And um, I'll add this award to it um, that I just played, the clip I just played, this would be the award that we'll add to that garbage can. I was like, a hawk, a hawk. You know, girl, right. I don't know. Exactly. Right? And the bird did what? Ooh, I said, a uh, bird, get back, fly up, fly away. Yeah. Be gone, bye, up in the sky, nice try, bye. <laughs> so but yeah family um you know let's just uh stay proactive with this whole situation mm -hmm. and um real quick what you see on the screen i know we mentioned it and uh, i like to show whenever we mention certain things i want to make sure you have sources when we shared about the title uh six about the influence that they have there as you see here uh, protecting dis uh, students from discrimination based on shared ancestry or ethnic characteristics, explaining ways that Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which protects students from race, color, national origin uh, discrimination, covers students who are or perceived to be Jewish. Now, you notice who got to the rear of this and look at and see who's at the front Jewish, Christian, Muslim, skit uh hindu buddhist or of another religious group the rise and report of anti-semitic incidents including at schools underscores the critical importance of addressing discrimination based on shared ancestry or ethnic uh, ethnic characteristics so you see that we are at this short end of this you don't see us where are we here all right and um, the other law suppressing boycott of Israel don't prevent discrimination. They violate civil civil liberties. As you see here, a number of states recently passed laws that require state contractors, including teachers, lawyers, newspapers, 
and journalists and even students who want to judge high school debate tournaments to certify that they are not participating in politically motivated boycotts against Israel, a foreign country, as Benea uh, highlighted earlier. So just want to make sure, uh, make sure you guys have sources before we wrap up. So that way uh, you guys understand that it's, as Benea pointed out, it's a it's it's far more serious than what you can ever imagine. Exactly. We are in the trenches, and you have to participate. Uh, I thought I heard one of you guys were getting ready to say something. Yeah, you, you actually took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to land back on what you said. Participate. I was going to bring up your words, Pastor Kelly. Um, participate, because oftentimes, you know, in these last days, we think that you know it, we have we have a tendency of wanting to just sit back on the sidelines. Um, but like Pastor Kelly said participate <laughs> you want to participate because normally with all these bills that are going through and family it's like this is one of those things where we should have been been participating regardless like whether you're talking about pta or your homeowners association or, or whatever you know when um participate in the process like with these laws the, these laws go through a process it's like they're not just created just overnight poof you know basically somebody has to create it and then it goes to the floor and all this other stuff and then sometimes family you know it goes before the public and they'll they'll sit there and they'll allow the public to come before the committee or whatever that you know that 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 governing body is to give their insight right to give to air their grievances just so that they can get a perspective of their constituents of their people um in their you know in their community and so they're getting i mean their family their groups called the um the ALCU, Pascal, I think that's the, is it, is it the call it ALC or is it ACL, ACL, ACLU, ACLU. Mm -hmm. so, so you got that group, you got, there's a group for, uh, that represents the, the Muslims. There's a group that represents the Christians. So all these other groups are there airing their grievances, making, making their, you know, their concerns known to the committee before they push out anything on the floor, but we're not there. We're at home playing video games, you know, Minding our, minding our own business and not putting a representative before you know before these decision ma makers just to let them know hey we don't like this you know from our community standpoint this is why and that, you know take this into consideration you know now there's a voice in the room <laughs> and that was the, the whole purpose of one of the purposes of african israelite justice foundation is to get us in the room let them know, you know, um, what from our perspective, the concerns from, you know, from our community. So say all that, all that to say, say this family, um, we're going to move to a, a phase where we're going to need some volunteers and the, and the purpose of the volunteers are going to be, you know, for those that, that will stand up in front of those committees, let your voices be known, your voices be heard, or whether it's calling your, just picking up the phone and saying, calling your Congress representative and just saying, hey, I don't agree with that bill. You know, I'm in your I'm in your division or, you know, your area, you know, and, and at least let your voice be known. And that way they, they will pause family. I'm telling you, it will let them pause before they start running off, you know, making these these decisions. So thank you for that. Bringing that up, Pascal. I totally forgot about that. I'm on. I'm on. Well, family, not going to hold you guys up any longer because I know I'm probably going to wake up probably about 11, 12. But um. But really appreciate you guys. And we just want to do this live here just to uh, bring some awareness uh, to uh, what's going on with the, the Candace Owens situation and for us not to just, um, you know, duck our heads, put our heads in the sand. You know, we this fight is coming to our doorstep. Actually, it's already at our doorstep. Mm -hmm. So, again, we have to participate, not spectate, but participate. But with that being said, uh, you know, as um, Moses, under the instructions of Yah, gave, he was given a set of um, instructions or, or better yet, words of encouragement for, the, for uh, Moses to give to the children of Israel as they uh, was met with their first challenge uh, coming out of Egypt. And that was the dead end by way of the water. He, he quoted, uh, he said this to them coming out of Exodus uh, 14 verse 13 to 14 here's the quote he says fear ye not stand still see the salvation of Yahweh. these egyptians that you see here today they will not have power over you ever again the most high will fight for you but here's the kicker family we have to hold our peace in other words as benel pointed out we have to be strategic on what we say and what we don't say 
In other words, calculated silence. And the Hebrew word there is karash, which means be quiet. Can't go back, can't stay here, keep moving forward. Shalom. Listen, Genesis chapter 11, verse 10 explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this back, Genesis 14, verse 13, Abraham steps on the scene. Being a descendant of Shem, which is a fact, means Abraham too was black. Abraham, born in the city of a black man, called Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Ham had four sons. One was named Cain. Here, let me do some explaining. Abraham, Isaac was the father. Jacob had 12 sons, the real, and these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. Children of Israel.